Any big comments on what town council has to say? Um, to remind myself. So, let's see. The first one was about consistency. Um, and I agreed with him that removing the of the zoning bylaw, every time we mention a section, it's probably a good thing. Because <coughs> this is the zoning bylaw. Um, just go through. Yeah, I agreed with that too. That if we're referencing something within this code, we could just say section X by X. And if we're referencing a code outside of this, then we would write which code we're referencing. Section mm -hmm. 6.3 of the general violence. And then at the bottom. There was at least one case where it. Uh, you could say section 6.1 of uh, herein to do a uh, deliberate reference. That was one, one of my thoughts for the... At the bottom of that same page, he pointed out that we might not need that section at all. Um, I had t moved it to the table, um, and he noticed it in the table, but I made the comment here. Um, and I didn't know if any of you remembered why we had that. Um, no. I'll let you read it. on a comment that yeah. a, um, a lot whose frontage doesn't meet the definition, then that would technically be a side or a rear yard condition. So, <coughs> by the way, the blinking is getting worse. Oh. Yeah. Is this something I'm doing? No, I think it's the bulb. Yeah. Do you want to shut it off and then okay. just see if you reboot? Sure. Yeah. Can't hurt. We used it earlier today and it worked fine. The well, yeah, it wasn't flashing in that no. meeting. So I think the thing is it has, um, it abuts a street, but that street isn't enough to provide the required frontage right so okay. it you know it probably has actual frontage on another street so this is like a side or a rear um, or p potentially this is a non-conforming lot um, maybe that's what this is about um i wonder if that's what this is about do we have a requirement for frontage for business i do see if the lot is non-conforming, <coughs> if the lot is non-conforming, and somehow gets permission to build on that lot, um, I assume they've picked one side to be the front, and that front is, doesn't meet the distance requirement, but why wouldn't no. it still have to comply with whatever the front setback is in the table? No, it doesn't. It would have to comply with whatever setback it is in the table. For a front? No. Why? Why are you reading it that way? No, I don't think he's reading. I think just in general. 
is what you're saying, right? Is if there's a non-conforming lot mm -hmm. that um, that for some reason doesn't have a particular meet a particular oh, definition of yes. frontage, but right, it still a, then has to meet the required front yard setback. Well, yes, or right. side yard setback, or any other whatever, setback. That yeah, whatever that yard is considered has to meet whatever's in the table. Right, and that's why we're saying we probably don't need. The table covers it. This first. Right. Right. Though that's a sub that's a substantive change in that if you have a um, if you have a property with a corner property, one of them is a you designate as a front to the front and the other you designate as a, as a side, you have a, right now you have 20 foot setback on both. Mm -hmm. If you delete that, you have 10 on one, 10 on the side and 20 in the front. Like if that's what the table says. Depending on which side you pick as the front or which side is identified as the front. <coughs> it's the lot. And what the, and what the use is, like what the table allows for that. Right, right. And I'm not saying right. that it's, it's right or wrong. Right. I'm just saying that right. deleting that does change what is allowed on that particular lot. Because right. right now we do have some side yards that are in B and C that are 10. Right. So here we have like a minimum, here we're saying a minimum of 20 feet. Right. right. Okay. Um, and that's a way that I read that is that that's uh, you, we're trying to deal with some corner lot issue there, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. and regardless of which one is the front, if they're that they're at some point someone you know that some board decided that yes, 20 feet should apply in either case. Um, right. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Um, when Ray was talking about it, he mm -hmm. made it seem like... Uh, we'll just reread this and I've got a different interpretation now. Yeah, <laughs> I'm reading his comments. I think Ray had a different interpretation. Yes. I think we're going to make the same point. Well, uh, the... Um, what is the um, item four, or, so, or note four, is where um, this constraint was moved into the table. So 6233 is now note four in the table. So right. It appears to be uh, for business C. A and C, yeah. Well, in the table, it appears to be only in C. Uh, I'm sorry, you're right. But in for the business A, it's 10 and 30 and 30. Wait, it doesn't. It's an exception in the notes because it doesn't match the table. <coughs> okay. <coughs> and given the the reference to business A, um, I'm trying to remember how we reconcile things with, for example, uh, Doyen's property, which is two business A lots. Uh, adjoining each other with no with zero setback in between the two lots. I mean, no no side yard. Right. But what is there's no street between them? Are you talking about a different provision? I'm trying to understand what provisions we are abandoning or creating. So this would be if you had um, like a side yard or a rear yard that has front like on, that has street frontage. So it probably was put in place for a corner. For corner condition. lots, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah, because that's the condition, or or, or a, a lot of where the rear where the where the rear could act is on a street mm -hmm. frontage as well, but right. not considered the frontage. Mm -hmm. And what was your different interpretation, Nick? 
I was interpreting this to say that uh, <coughs> that the side we were considering did not have adequate length to be considered the front yard. Right, that is that's what not what this is saying. No. He he adds adequate in there with no one else. Right. Right. He added it. Well, yeah, read it. When I re read it, it just says on which the building does not have frontage. So yes. the, the street. No. no, but the way it's written, the way the he added, yeah. to, he, he said added adequate. adequate. Yes, it doesn't say adequate. Building I does not have frontage, meaning it's not fronting on that street. It's not the front. We it, basically, if you've got a corner lot, yeah. the side you need to be twenty feet off the side road, mm -hmm. minimum. Yeah, that is, yeah. and I should I should point out this JM five comment that was like me. Yeah. Um, so I put okay. the word adequate, but I think that well, we talked about we that. We talked about that yes. with Ray. Yes, he said it should say adequate frontage. But how does our how is frontage adequate defined? For, yeah, adequate for it's what? a continuous. Well, so it's defined by like what's required in that that zoning district. Right. right. Uh, I mean, um, it's like the. A, right. But corner lot frontage is like if 50 feet is required and they only have 45, that's not adequate. On a corner lot, I guess here's the question: On a corner lot, um, does it there is one right? There is one side of the lot that's that's defined as the front. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which with with I, regard to setback only. With regard to setback, yes. But the length, the required frontage wraps the corner of the lot. It says the measurement of lot frontage shall not include jogs and street width, backup strips, or other irregularities in a street line. In the case of a corner lot, the measurement of lot frontage may, at the owner's option, extend to the midpoint of the curve connecting street lines instead of to their intersection. So it sounds like it doesn't wrap. Right. To the curve. And I've, I, I've not yeah. seen Glenn ever interpret it as wrapping the corner. Yeah. <coughs> he usually picks one side. Well, that says it could go to the midpoint. It could go. Yeah. Right, but halfway, but like not. All the way around the corner. Right. Okay, but halfway, picks it up. So. Gives you some. Gives you some, yeah. So the issue with this definition, I mean, this section 6233 is um, when I read it, frontage means um, that which you, um, however, we define frontage like in the table, which isn't quite the same, right? Well, except that this is listed as an exception to the what's in the table. So if it doesn't, so you're saying what's listed in the table is not the same as the way we define frontage in the section two? Or what are you saying? Um, On a corner lot, I'll still go back to that. On a corner lot, say you have um, 200 feet on either on either corner. Who decides which is the front? In which, it, because that depends on what your setback is and what your frontage is. So that's really the, once you decide what the frontage is, then this is absolutely appropriate the way that it's written here because you have your frontage mm -hmm. and then you have your other thing which um, which is the side yard and in th this case you're saying that that side yard still needs to meet that same 20 foot setback because that's really the point mm -hmm. here is I think in the discussion about adequate versus not adequate it's which one's the front but does the front have to be where you have frontage? If you're on a corner lot, could you have 50 feet in the front, but your frontage is 100 feet on the side? Well, functionally. Functionally. Your functional frontage. Right. Yeah. 
Right. Functional and zoning. <coughs> right. Because, <laughs> um, like, your access doesn't have to be through your frontage, right? Right. Um, right, which was the issue with that development uh, off of Level Street. Right. The house that was already existing. Uh, well, they s kept switching there. Right, but they, they wanted to change the front yard of it. So and then they didn't meet the setback. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, but I think clearly the point of this, at least to me clearly, the point of this was to deal with those corner conditions where the where um, the side acts is still on a street and acts like a whether it's a functional frontage. Uh, what if we take the, the word front. frontage out and just say the required yard on a Mm, maybe that's not the, gonna isn't make the it problem clear. is the 20 feet doesn't equal what's here in the table it's different well these are all the exceptions to the table but I don't know if we do we need this exception do we want this exception like what's what's the worst case scenario if we don't have this um, if you look up no, <coughs> you're saying this is no floor in the table yeah no floor is written yeah, well, so like for one or two family dwellings, it just seems like it's a contradiction. Because is it 10? Do we require 10 or do we require 20? If it's a, I guess if it's a side yard that's not on a street, it would be 10. Yeah. If it's a side yard that's on a street, it would be 20. Okay. The note, note 4 is written the way I originally interpreted it. If you don't have the minimum frontage, then you have to be 20 feet back. Okay, the... Possibly, if we look at our definitions. Oh yeah, I mean like this is way clearer. But that's two different things. But it's is it dealing <coughs> with two different conditions. Two different things because it's written differently. So, <laughs> <laughs> but it, it's addressing two different conditions. Yes. Oh, and then it's only for a multifamily dwelling. No. No. Except, no. except if the lot. Oh, except, except if. Except okay. Yeah. yeah. The. Um, we have a definition for front lot line, which might be useful right. in this context. We do? Yes, we do. In the <coughs> definition of a lot. In the lot width. In in section six or in the section two? In the definitions. Okay. Um, 20, it's, it's the distance at the... <coughs> well, is in the description of, or the definition of a lot and the various dimensions of it, there's the, the concept of a front lot line, right. which is a choice that's made when the lot is developed. And it's something that we might be able to take advantage of to clarify um, but either change, the, change the frontage to front lot line. I mean, frontage, the definition of frontage implies that it comes off of a street, right. it's accessible from the street because it says... Dave, where in the bylaw is that? It's in the definitions of front. Definition of lot width. Are you talking about? It's the very what? end of the definition. Uh, definitions in section six or definitions in section two? I'm sorry, definition two. two. That's what I'm looking at. Are you looking at yard? Mm -hmm. Front yeah, yard? Diagram is? Yeah, I see the diagram. So. So he's suggesting that because there's a, a reference to this front lot line. Oh, I see. At the very end of the definition, tangent right. to the front lot okay, line. Okay. Okay. Yep. Under lot width. Right. <sighs> 
So what are you suggesting we do with that information, Dave? Oh. <clears throat> use uh, in, in the appropriate fashion, which I haven't determined yet, <laughs> use front lot line instead of front edge. Um, 6233 doesn't make sense to me because it talks about the bird yard on a street <coughs> on which the bill is on. On a street. So if it doesn't have frontage, what doesn't it have? Does it not front that street? Is the line not adjacent to the street? I think that's what Ray was asking. Like, what are we? It, it's I, it's not enough, right? So <clears throat> it doesn't meet the minimum linear feet that we want. Is what? Is, is it on a street? If it doesn't have frontage. Is it not, does it not have the minimum required, the minimum frontage from the table? Or does it just not front the street? Is it a bound lot somewhere? It's on a street. It says right here, on a street. Okay. So I assume it, what this means is it doesn't meet the minimum requirement. Okay, so instead of adequate, you could say minimum. But I don't, I don't know. I mean, like, this is so... No, but that's not what, I, I, and I don't have a suggestion on how to write it, but that's not what this is getting at. Because if it had, if, we, if there's a lot that has 200 feet on either side, one of them was designated the front, one of them was designated not the front, right? Yeah, okay. They both have adequate, they're both adequately long, <coughs> but at one point, one was designated the front, one was designated not the front. What this is saying is that the side that it was not designated in the front still has to have a 20 foot setback. Okay, setback. Right. Set so it could be it could be either condition actually, right? It could be that, or it could. Or be, it could be yeah. It doesn't I, yes, have enough. Yeah, it doesn't have enough. Right. Don't know. But so we probably. But what it's getting at is you don't want to allow a 10 foot setback mm -hmm. on a side street. Right. Is essentially it. Okay. I, I'm not sure I agree with that, but that's what it's that's Yeah, what it's, it's basically the, the lot line border <coughs> the street, which is not the front lot line. Should still have a minimum setback of 20 feet. <coughs> that seems to be what was intended. I would suggest we just reword it to say that and not delete it. Otherwise, we're creating something that we... Right. 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 We haven't really thought through, like, right. all the... Um, so, and we weren't really intending to change things for business A and C. Right. Um, we were really intending to change things for industrial. Yeah. So, um, should we say that is not designated as that lot's frontage? The required yard on a street which is not designated as the front. Front as the front, yeah, the front yard. Or the front lot line, that Dave mm -hmm. was saying. It's mentioned. And so the designated could be because it's not adequate. It could be because the f it's plenty adequate, but the other side is what they want the front to be. <coughs> So we want to say which is not desica designated. Which is not the front line. As the front on a street which is not designated <coughs> as the front lot line. Lot line. Okay. All right. Um, should we move on? Comments? Anybody have other comments on this? <coughs> so was it was it um, Ray that was asking for more definition on the lot of the shadow casting? Yes. And so what I said is that I think that I thought you wanted some flexibility and that it could be taken care of through site plan review. I think so. I think you want to make them come in and 
show us the shadow study for the whole year, like some of the other developers have done, and then you can see what the impact of that is. Right. Decide whether any of it is bad or because if we're only looking at this little portion that was mentioned here, you might you might say, well, okay, that's all right for just the winter. Right. Casting a shadow on somebody's garage doors, you know, some uh, industrial garage doors is not a great idea. Is everyone okay with that? Um, <coughs> there were a number of comments on things in the table. Um, It's a little hard to read um, on this paper, so I'll just go down to the screen. Well, there, <coughs> the one that, the one that was interesting was the comment on the, if the adjacent lot is vacant, uh, calculating the, the the average setback for the adjacent lot when you've got a vacant lot adjacent was. Uh, Clear, and I'm not sure it's what we were aiming at. Which note? I think it's note one. <coughs> it says the required front yard yeah. is okay. Okay. 10 feet or the average of the actual front setbacks. Okay, well, if you can't calculate it, then it's 10 feet. Or with a required front yard, as spec which as specified in this table. Um, which is 10. <laughs> is it? I'm sorry, it's 15 in most cases, yeah. So you assume they meet the requirement of the table if there's nothing on the lot. Is that? What we want to do? <laughs> Probably, yes. Well, I defer to the rule, not to the no, exception, it, it right? It says if the lot is vacant, then it is deemed to be occupied by a building. Uh, it shall be deemed to be occupied by a building. And if you have to assume there'd be a building on it, then it has to meet whatever the table says. Right, exactly. So, okay. so you agree with that? Mm -hmm. Okay. I do. I don't know if anybody else has any objection to that. No, I think you defer to the rule, not the exception. It's a little it's a little hard to read the comments. So does anyone need any clarification on any of the things that it's flashing again, isn't it? Just were frank previous to this. <coughs> this note one does not appear to be referenced anywhere in the table. It is, remember? We just couldn't, it wasn't legible in this sort of printed it, version. Um. It's in the um, header under required front yard. 
Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Thank you. And two also is in the header, but under maximum building height. Yep. like um sorry i just realized i had a question for you um on page five my comment jm20 <coughs> that might actually be a holdover comment from the first from last time you looked at it now that i you wanted the flexibility for the buffer. All right. I thought we did that way if we understood if there's an existing condition where okay. there's a building we can we can develop what that buffer is. Okay. Yeah. If there's no more comments, we, we do need to take a vote tonight. Yeah. Um, a vote. No motion to close the public hearing. Move that we close the public hearing for the proposed uh, zoning bylaw amendments for the April 2018 town meeting. Second. All in favor? Um, and do we also need to vote to recommend it for the warrant? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, move that the CPDC recommend the proposed zoning bylaw amendments for the uh, Springtown meeting warrant. As amended? As amended. Or is it work? I'm going to make an amendment based on that one thing we talked about. So as amended, yeah. As amended. It's fine, yeah. Okay. All in favor? <coughs> <coughs> All right. I know. Right Next up, we're right on time. Uh, continued public hearing for the 40 hour plan review at 467 Main Street, as well as property. Good evening, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Attorney Brian McGreal, on behalf of the applicant, uh, Ray Bogus from Bogus Properties LLC. Rodney Savio, our architect, is also here tonight. Uh, the last time we were here in January, I think uh, we were pretty close to the um, close of this matter. We had submitted some new materials, and the commission uh, wanted uh, some time to look at it because uh, you had just received a lot of those materials uh, just before the meeting. Um, so, um, really, uh, from what we have submitted, there hasn't been any changes uh, specifically. Um, so we're obviously happy to answer questions in regards to what was submitted. Um, we've also had an opportunity to take a look at the draft decision that Julie provided us. We, we uh, provided some comments to Julie on that, and um, we have a couple of other <coughs> issues we would like to discuss with the commission in that regard also when the board, uh, sorry, when the commission deems it appropriate. Okay. And I printed the email with our comments. I also annotated the decision that I printed for you guys incorporating some of them. Um, we got a few minor facade changes in the wrong can go over if you guys want to go over them or uh, if you want to. Sure, yeah, or, I saw those. I thought that, I saw that you had addressed those if you'd like to go over them. You can do that now, Julie. Okay. Julie, you're going to read them? Sure, yeah. It's really just on the elevations. Okay. Um, do you remember what page? Uh, <coughs> 6-1 in or 6-1 in. All right, I'll just see. I'll tell you who stop. <laughs> okay. Yeah. 
this is a good one, Scott Wing. Help me to zoom a little bit. All right. Um, oh, it's up to you guys on the page. <coughs> no, Don't you. stare at it too long. Yeah. It's not just <laughs> <laughs> So one of the things we do is we play with some of the alignment of the brick piers on this piece coming down. So I think this reads better now. It's more aligned and more rooted and supported better. <coughs> um, we articulated some of the cornice lines, which you'll see on the next uh, slide. If you go to that one. On the rear of the building, that was an area that we talked about really not making it feel like it was just the back. We articulated the cornice lines a little bit more detail, had some um, overhangs over, or cornice lines over the balconies. So we try to bring that facade up to some of the same level of detailing as the, the main facade without the materials. It's really hit since the last time. Mm -hmm. On the corner, you worked on the corner. Corn, the yeah. corner. yeah, if you go back uh, one slide. So again, the ground floor is the, sort of the retail space, cafe space. We, the glass sort of turns there on the corner. We have this better articulation. I think it feels better now than what we had before. Uh, again, the brow has some prominence to it. We can talk about that as it relates to the building height a little bit too. Um, and then we're still trying to play with this, the masonry materials that are going to go and what's the gray zone here, whether it's a split face block, uh, an Aris craft type block, or whether it just wants to be brick. But right now we're showing the Aris craft type block. Yeah. On the uh, garage entrance plan, we have talked a little bit about <coughs> excuse me, um, where the transformer was located and how the piers were turning in. Did you ever work on that? Remember, we were trying to widen up the mouth of that entrance. We, yeah, we widened it about as much as we, we needed to have something for columns support there. So we have about a two foot, two and a half foot by two and a half foot square, and then the transformer is there, and then our access aisle from the egress there on the side. So I'm not so much, I'm not sure we can get too much wider at that point, but I think <coughs> now it at least feels grounded and supported over there. Have you met with RMLD on the transformer? We did. Had, we had a conversation with them while back. November ish or so. And that's an okay location? <coughs> they didn't have any issue when we talked to them. I think they were waiting maybe for someone to get back. He's not for a while. I'm not sure who that Oh, yeah. Okay. They did have someone that was a. Uh, yeah, okay. So it's probably worth a follow up with that person. Yeah. Right but they sent us their, their guidelines and. They typically want bollards or something that would protect it, but right. maybe you're not there yet. Yeah. <coughs> yeah, I mean, we have the wall here, which will help. But maybe one or two more on the sidewalk. On the sidewalk, yeah. yeah, what I was thinking. Yes, they were open. They were good. Can you refresh my memory of what's going on with the lighting in the front of the building, the Main Street facade? Sure, let me know that. Mm -hmm. And the version update for the plan. Yeah, we, we don't have it showing yet, but I can tell you, in, in the, over the residential entrance, we'll have a canopy with lights shining down, so nothing washing up on the face of the building. And then in these locations, the pier again, it's a, a, wash, a light washed down onto the pier, not up the facade of the building. So it's fairly minimal. It's just those six fixtures, and then whatever we do on the underside of the canopy, shining down. Is that enough lighting? I'm in balcony that have their own personal lights at all. Yeah, I was I thinking about the commercial space and whether or not how that lighting would work for the retailers. Well, I think the big part of the lighting comes from what's being lit inside the building as well. So there's going to be quite about a good amount of spill light coming out through the glass. So I, I didn't think we wanted to light up the facade too much on the street, given the amount of glass that's there. And this just provides some basic ambient light on the sidewalk surface. Well, I think most of the buildings that we've seen have had gooseneck lighting um, over the sign band. Thinking about uh, where's the sign band? <clears throat> Don't forget we have street lights too, and so we've had we've had street lights and goosenecks both lighting the same thing, and it's true. Tree blocking all of them. Right. We looked at the goosenecks, and what we yeah, found was lights, to get yeah. the yeah. the goosenecks would actually create these hot spots and not light the top surface of the canopy. That's why we wanted to get a little bit lower and throw it out more <coughs> than, yeah. Where did you say the signboard be? Um, it's going to be a little bit a function of working with the retailers that go in there, but we're thinking either somewhere right on the fascia panel <coughs> of, the, of the canopy. Of the awning. Of the okay. awning. And those are fabric awnings? They are fabric. <coughs> Oh, 
but we're not approving signage, right? Right. No. Okay. So there'll no. have to be a master signage plan for yeah. the building. Yeah, once we figure out what's in there. With and the lighting could is. change yeah. if that changes. Right. I'll just advise you that, that um, one of the restaurants on Main Street had cans <coughs> like this or light fixtures like this, but then they opted to do this more of a antiquated bare bulb thing. And the bulb was way too bright and sort of creating a lot of clear, which you don't like to see on the fixtures. So yeah. they, we were lucky that they were able to use a much dimmer bulb and that took it way down. But otherwise, there should, we shouldn't see the light source. No, these yeah. will all be dark sky, I mean, effectively dark sky compliant and washing down, not... Okay, well, you can wash up if you want, just <coughs> not out. Yeah. Yeah, makes sense. You can go up and down, just don't go out. There's too much clear for the driving. Yeah. So, and like, remember that we don't let, like to see light coming through the awnings or through the solid material, mm -hmm. opaque material. <laughs> the engineering panel was kind of brief, just said that they were okay with anything. Yeah, there's comments they had in an earlier memo that still apply, and so that's still noted in the decision. <coughs> um, there's some things they, they need, but they can be worked out prior to building permit. Right. Um, um, comments? Any comments from the board? Yeah. Looks good to me. Yeah. Comments from the public? Actually, I have a question for Julie. I was reading the PTTTTTTF form, <laughs> and it said there's a right turn only on Green Street? Not currently, no. Oh. Um, it's something I, I believe the Board of Selectmen are going to be <coughs> discussing potentially tomorrow night. I think the police are going to request it from the Board of Selectmen tomorrow night. Um, so that, that memo is really for, like, the future. <laughs> I just wanted to show you that was the discussion that was had. Okay. Um, well, let's say that gets proposed for, um, what is that side street? Green Street. Green Street. Green street. Well, what's opposite that? <coughs> Green Street. Yeah, so if we start proposing these right turns only, that doesn't break the traffic. It makes it better, right? It doesn't. The police think it'll make it a lot, it that intersection, better. which is currently not good at all, right. much better. So they were they were already thinking along those lines, um, and then this project kind of brought it to light. Okay, so. I was just getting to the point that it doesn't negate everything we talked about with traffic. It only it can only make it better. That's what we think. Well, I mean, it can't make it worse. It can't. <laughs> you can make it back up. You can't really get worse than F, right? When you're crossing in the other direction, it's always worse than say backing up the same direction. Uh, Backing up traffic to the right is safer than trying to cross the other way. Mm -hmm. Even if it starts to back up, they just want to get out. That's all. The, um, the caution there is that so there are, you know, how many hours a day where left hand turns, left turns are a safety issue um, if you put in a no right turn I mean no left turn a hundred percent of the time that means that everyone coming out will turn right and go through the neighborhood a hundred percent of the time um, well neighborhood in this case is Main Street no he means no. Out of the garage you're out of the garage and take a right because they know they can turn left if you're trying to head so on okay, to South Main Street, to go you're going to go turn right and right and right and right, or however get 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 out that way. Okay. Um, so, you know, I, right? They they need to think through that because, um, you know, so sort of you can't go get worse is not necessarily a great <coughs> answer because what it could do is create the problem create somewhere a problem else. somewhere else right and, I and, and not do anything for the problem that they're trying to solve right. so I don't know what the answer is but I just I hope that you communicate that I do think that um, part of the conversation was allowing for street furniture and on-street parking makes it difficult to to turn left or go straight and even even right you have to pull out a little to see around 
um, at any time of day. Um, so what's the, mm -hmm. pick your poison, do we want traffic to be able to turn left all the time or do we want more parking on Main Street, more amenities for pedestrians on Main Street? I um, think the police were very concerned about the outdoor dining. Right. Blocking sight lines. Yeah. And so. Okay, I'm, I'm confused because I thought that the right turn only was from Green Street onto Main Street. It is. Not something from the garage. It's not. I mean, but but if people know, if people want to go left on Main Street and they know they can't, then they'll have to go right out of the garage and go around the, through the neighborhood <coughs> to get south. Okay. Or even west. So if you're going to the train <coughs> station, you've got to actually backtrack to go down to mm -hmm. Elliott to go Washington. If you're driving to the train station and you live here, you really should be rethinking things. Well, you're or driving that direction. <laughs> right? If you're going out to West Street, right, you're, you're, you actually may, you may end up creating more traffic, more problem at the intersection because then everyone has to go around and through what the Washington Street exit uh, intersection instead of maybe coming, you know, a different and not going through that intersection. It would take more luck. But again, how many, how much, how often is there going to actually be people out on the, if there's, if it's about visibility because of um, outdoor dining, mm. our outdoor dining um, season is about five days yeah. out of the year. Yeah. But it's, it, they were also, actually their bigger issue I feel like was the on-street parking. Which yeah. might be Which full all the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Uh, um, that's bigger. Yeah. So, this is a compromise. Yeah. This conversation. Um, and it has not been approved yet. Yeah. This conversation want, will yeah, still have to happen. That's why I wanted to make sure that, that um, those conversations. Yeah. Are no, that's a good. Um, but they did. The police did feel like this intersection, regardless of this project, could benefit from a right turn only. You know how. Wide Green Street is. Twenty four feet. I think it's about twenty four feet. Marked on that civil plan. Who is your title correct on? Who is twenty four feet? I think it is on here. Mm -hmm. right, well, it's the one. Um, uh, Shoot Street was turned into one way, which then just created more problems on Linden Street. Um, so it's those sorts of things that, you know, it, the one way on Shoot Street was there, was that problematic enough to then create Linden Street one way, which is a problem intersection up at the corner of Linden and Middlesex in Lowell, um, yeah. which is probably an accident. So. Uh, yeah. I think they solved, I think there was an issue that was solved on Shoe Street that created a bigger issue mm -hmm. over on that other intersection. It wasn't quite thought through how those pathways would be. I think at least here with this one, if traffic gets redirected to Washington, it's getting directed to a signalized intersection. I, I'm not saying one. No, I'm, not saying I'm just it's not saying good. like, just, yeah. I think that was part of the logic is, yeah. um, directing them to a safer intersection for their turning movements. Okay. Do you want to work through this decision? I do, yeah. You folks better with the trash hauler that can actually fit the truck in there and tip those barrels with your ceiling heights? Yes, well, well we proposed uh, two pickup locations that okay. weren't necessarily in the garage. Yeah. They're a pull-up. Sorry, so, so we proposed two... Well, they're not. Not in the garage. Oh. Not necessarily. No, that's, yeah. I mean, if we could find something that fits in the garage, absolutely. We'll, we'll go for that. But, um, yeah. So we're proposing that they, they bring them to these areas and then they drive the truck by. You know, they'll be sitting there for a short period of time. And then the trash company's going to come dump the barrels in there and then put them back in the garage for our property management company to put them back in the trash room. So it's going to be a temporary pickup, like a drive by pickup. There's, it's, there's no way to get a compactor in, in a building. So you're stopping a truck out there for what, 20 minutes, half an hour, <coughs> to dump all those barrels? 
I mean, it's only it's gonna be half an hour, but six barrels at most. So they pull into Green Street. Six barrels for a place this big? Impossible. Well, if they get picked up four days, three, four days a week. We're using a lot more than six barrels. Well, they're not like a, a small barrel. They're Ninety-six good. gallon barrels. You're still going to use more than six for as many units. Well, if they come every day then. Oh, not on the weekend, but Monday to Friday or... I mean, we can increase the, the barrel size, increase the <coughs> amount of barrels, but there's there's no way to get a compactor in here. Um, you would need higher, I mean, higher ceilings. You need a way to get it in and out, and that's going to take a lot longer pulling a compactor out than it is to wheel out barrels. We're still not, not talking about, depending on whatever day that you pick up, having the trash truck sitting, or he feels like pulling up to this curb. Well, no, they can't. I don't think you can pick it up on Main unless it's way off hours. I think you're going to have to go on to Green Street just past the garage door, um, assuming that it's either one of those side lift trucks. Yeah, something. We'll just load it that way. We're still following the traffic on the road. Well, we can do it at um, 8 a.m. Yeah, off hours. We, we were posing hours between 11 and 3, and that's what was in the decision letter, but we can. Post different hours if you guys want. Um, you know, our goal is not to be here during rush hour by any means. I don't think the trash company wants to be here during rush hour. Can we accommodate some of the businesses downtown that have loading requirements that are basically uh, Woburn Street? Yeah. That seems to work for the most part. Mm -hmm. For the most part. Can you get out? If it's an issue, I think that will have to be addressed. I know that. We'll hear about it. Okay. <coughs> so these, these notes in here are from Bogos? Yeah, I wrote them based on the um, email with the comments from the applicant. And then I printed the email for you guys as well, so you have like the original feedback it's given. <clears throat> well, I don't really like the plus or minus, and I certainly don't like the 50 on the height receiver. Um, so you know, there has to be some number after that plus or minus. Is it one foot? 48 feet should yeah. be adequate. Well, I can do it. Uh, interpretation issue on that, Rob. Yeah, uh, we can commit to a height, Mr. Chairman, but it, it was accounting for the parapet walls, which, under the definition in your bylaw, are included in the height, which brings with the parapet walls brings it up to 50. Yeah, Rob. I thought it was uh, top of roof. We checked it yeah, three checked times it today. today. We were sort of sort of we <laughs> originally, <laughs> and that's so we've had the the roof surface at 48, but then the parapet. Which doesn't happen everywhere. It happens most drastically here. It goes up to fish two feet higher. But the roof membrane is all at 48. Hi, Julie. Julie. Can you look at the definitions? Mm -hmm. Includes the parapets. Yeah. Definition. So then 50 would be what you're asking for. Okay. Correct. No change to what has been shown today. That's what I'm trying to find. That's a, within the DS. Is that the definition in the DSGD section or the, the DSGD general? Section? Yeah, there's a like the Town Council will allow that? 1044. Yeah, I mean, because that, that was completely separate, developed separately, and we weren't able to pull those definition issues out, correct? I mean, we yeah. <clears throat> is that what it requires? No, there's no, no right. I know some of them came from the sta sta state statute, but I didn't know that was one of them. What I saw in the uh, downtown district was that the height requirement is 45 feet, and you can waive it, but there's no definition of height in that section or building height. So I just then went to the That's regular bylaw for the definition. Mm -hmm. Page 103, <coughs> height of building. That's not the right section. Oops. 
Temple four is gateway. Okay. That goes from floor area gross to household income. Right. On page 130. Mm -hmm. okay. <coughs> I'm sorry, 130 on the PDF. Right. I guess I'd be willing to entertain something more specific. It said it's 48 feet and then the plus or minus for a small section of the parapet on some, you know, some small section of the building. Yeah, we're or something we, like that. We're willing to fully commit to a height. It just, we realize that the definition, we read the definition wrong. Nothing's changed in the plan, so. I know. I see it. So it says in the waiver, Request the parapets account for 33% of the roof perimeter. Does it really? I mean, it's less than a third on that face. Yeah, I don't think it's a third total. Well, there's no need for it to be this. It's a little less than a third on that yeah. face. I guess it's the whole north face. Just need it. It's really just here, here, and there. The darker colored areas there and there. Can you say less than 25 percent? Yeah. I don't want to. I don't want to put in some weird number. Like that. Right. So this was given to me today. So the 33 percent is not correct. I mean, it doesn't look correct, but where did it come from? I don't. I don't do that. <laughs> You can come up with a number, we can use it. Otherwise, I think we just have to use some language and say that it's strictly for the northwest uh, corner, the northwest parapet. I understand that that's basically what we're seeing here. Right. I'll, I'll come with a sawzall and take it down if you do anything more. <laughs> and a sawzall ready for some signage up there. Stupid town. Um, Uh, is anybody okay with that? Do you have a problem with that? I'm just questioning whether it's 50 is the maximum. The In the table, the dimensional controls of the, of the zoning bylaw, the, in business B, in the underlying district, the maximum height is 45. And that's what we use as our basis for the design for the downtown smart growth. Right. So the waiver is just to go over that. Yeah. Mm. The justification was that they wanted a little more height in the first floor for the commercial spaces, which are kind of small. Mm -hmm. I think it's, I, mean, I think the um, that stretch of Main Street and this structure, um, there's no harm um, in having it three or four feet taller. It's a, it's a flat section of Main Street. I'm questioning whether it's only three or four feet based on this. According to the plan, that top roof line, the standard roof line, is 47 feet, three quarters inches. Mm -hmm. So the gray that they've got looks like it's far more than three feet tall. You mean the, the structure? That gray, oh, oh, not, no, the gray above that. Which is specifically excluded in other parts of the... Of the, the so panels. what is that? Elevator, 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 stairwell. Okay. 
so the power pit you're talking about is the top of that gray section right there dark gray yeah. okay the ceiling doesn't pop up any higher inside the roof isn't any higher it's all the same height roof behind it behind that zone it's just there's a two foot tall right. curb pit. and the rooftop i don't know um, public area or whatever you call it would be set back and the fencing is isn't even shown on there, correct? Right, not on that view. You'd have to go back to the roof plan. <coughs> that was back in a few pages back. I don't think you'll see it, though. You certainly won't see it from that side of the street. I, I don't even think you'll catch it from the other side. Mm -hmm. Right, not the other side. looks very much set back. Just checking. Mm -hmm. You might see it from uh, Ash, if you went up around the back. Mm -hmm. You start picking up elevation there? Yeah. yeah. If you go up the hill, up Main Street, you might be able to see it a little bit. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. There are structures on top of the uh, Charles Bell mm -hmm. that are significantly more than 45 feet high. And Washington Arms and... Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Okay, so did we come up with some language here? 48 feet. Plus or minus? No, sorry, that's, that's wrong. <coughs> the general finding. The general finding shouldn't include the waiver language, right? Just right. 48 foot plus or minus. Let's say there, I guess. Or we can go 48 foot, and then we'll discuss it in the waiver section. Sure. Sounds like you want to remove some of the very specific language about how the floors are organized. Yes. But the unit count won't change no. as well. The bedroom count won't change, the unit count won't change. Um, just in case, you know, when the units get a little too small, it depends when we get into the uh, into the plan floor. If you want to drop a two bedroom down and one bring the one bedroom buffer. Okay, so where do we have a total count? It's at the very bottom of that paragraph. Um, Page four. Yeah, at the bottom of the first paragraph on page four. Were my um, interior enclosed square feet calculations for each floor correct? No. Yeah. I think you're going on an older plan. They've actually gotten smaller. Okay, so are, are those things you also want to remove, or do you, were you going to give me revised numbers? We're going to give you revised numbers. Okay. Okay. They're, they're less on each floor. And what shows in this decision? Right, Rob? Yes. So is this a new plan even since the one I had no. last week? No, the plan is the same. I'm not sure that the areas, these may have been older areas. I know, I thought I revised them, but maybe I didn't. Okay. One question while we're waiting for them. Um, on page three, I highlighted some plans that you've given, given you submitted earlier on, um, like a tree analysis and a landscape plan. Those are still to be included as part of the final group set. Um, if they were from DCI, then they're probably not relevant. If they were from um, William Fleming, uh, landscape then they're probably relevant still. It was just uh, I don't know if I got landscaping plans from someone named William Fleming. Uh, that's the only landscape plan I had. Uh, it would show, it had like a picture of the existing trees, kind of like in the squares, one out. Um, I, I can resign it too. And they reviewed them in the meeting? They've Did never, they talk they've about never them? been on, they've never talked about them. Good. We thought it was part of the requirement to show the system trees. So the tree analysis, I, I have listed that they're, they were all prepared by design consultants. But you have different ones. I'll, I'll, I'll send you one. Right. <laughs> they're, they're probably the same ones. Maybe they were submitted with design consultants. Oh, maybe I just got the, okay. I see, yeah. Okay. 
I'm okay with rewarding the sidewalk outdoor seating area for the email. It says only if they're allowed to do it by the board so I can right. I think the email's very wordy, the way it's worded though. Well you can, you can <laughs> but you something want. along those lines, yeah. Uh, the roof deck though, I, I'm okay with removing that it will not be visible from, from the street. Because I understand that you could find a spot where you can see it. But I think we should somehow state that it's set back from the roof edge. And if we know what that distance is, we should put that in there. I would also think that instead of eliminating the reference to how it's furnished, you may want to, we may want to leave it in that said it may be furnished with tables and chairs so that we're not saying you have to do that, but at least it's recognized that you, it, it's, it might not just be a deck yeah. fencing, but you might actually have something. I just didn't want to be uh, boxed into like only having benches or something along the lines of that. Right. So if we change that to will to from will to may, I think. Mm -hmm. yeah. Also, in the findings, you're not necessarily boxed. In the conditions, you're boxed. Okay. <laughs> we have a distance from the front. It's approximately ten feet. Uh, for the, for the ten feet or more. Minimum, minimum ten feet. Does that work? Minimum ten feet. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's safer. Yeah. Will be a minimum of ten feet from the parapet. The, uh, the face. We set back from the roof edge and right. ten feet. Right. So we're having something that we could vote on. Well, I'm trying to get going through one page at a time. Between the email and yep. it's written here. Do you have an answer to your question about where the utility meters would be located? Um, yeah, I'm just looking for where's the question? Where the utility meters would be. Electric meters would be. Gas. We have been, the gas meters we're trying to put in the, if we create a basement space, put them down there. Electric meters would be on the second floor and the fourth floor. Okay. Okay. Look at this waiver list. And I'm sure we're going to it. You guys are okay with no information on building lighting? Oh. No, besides anecdotal things they've said in meetings. I assume they're going to have to submit something. This is all findings. We didn't really talk about lighting much mm. till tonight. So. We talked a little bit about it. We kind of gave them a sense of what we'd be looking for. I would suggest we just have a condition that says they have to submit the lighting fixtures for approval. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'll add it to the end of General condition number four, 
where I talk about lighting. Mr. <clears throat> Chairman, if I may, just before you get too far in on page five, that just a, it's, a, it's a finding, but I think it might have carried over for a prior decision. It talks about um, 7.1.2 building step back requirements. I don't think our step backs are that far in this project. Correct, well, correct. Yeah, I didn't, that's why I highlighted it. I don't think it was correct. Um, yeah. Do you have actual numbers? It's like five to six. Five to six. Five to six. Okay. Uh, page five. So five to six at the second floor and another five to six at the fourth floor. So, okay. Yeah. So it ends up being like that to 11, but Correct. not the whole way up. All right. Got it. Do you know how much the ground level is set back? Like how much extra side workers? It's about a foot. At these points down here, it's somewhere just shy of a foot. Okay. And then here, you know, the door is three and then the iron's like, so it kind of Density waiver of 75.6. Is that the correct number? Based on the point, um, this 0.41 acres that they mentioned in this request. Yeah. Okay, we still have an open public here. Yep. I guess I would propose to write the height as uh, to allow a building height of 48 feet. I would say plus or minus, but with the northwest portion of the parapet no higher than 50 feet. That work? That yeah, works for us, yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. yeah. I don't think that the loading space that you show satisfies the requirement for a loading space because that would allow any size truck, you know, a top, much taller truck that can probably fit under there. But I think we also recognize that some loading can occur there. Thoughts are on that. I don't think it, I think they need the waiver because I don't think it yeah. satisfies the right. We also need to point out that there is no loading on Main Street. Um, would that be a condition? Yeah, probably not I, no part of the waiver, but... It's in the conditions. Um, <coughs> is on page 13, 5C. Thank you. Right. <clears throat> I, no I noted that on the waiver request, like, we don't allow on-street deliveries for non-residential uses on Main Street. So those three spaces can't be used for commercial. Well, they could be used for move-in, for residential tenants. They can't be used for commercial. Oops. Is this a note from 
from you, Julie. Any other waivers necessary to allow the project to be constructed? Um, that was suggested by the applicant's attorney. Wow. And I've never <laughs> seen you guys <laughs> agree to yeah, that. Yeah. So. <laughs> well, the theory behind that is, uh, with all due respect, a lot of board and commissions do do that because you know what you're approving. You know, they're tied into the plan, so that, that waiver just allows you to build it according to the plans and it's somewhat of a belt and suspenders if the commission or the applicant just forgot one little small waiver um, that somebody wouldn't um, be able to hold that up on appeal in a technicality. <coughs> I just so that's the only reason for that, but you know, I, no, if I it's not the practice here, I certainly respect that and understand it. But if the rest of it complies, you don't need any of the waivers. I mean, what other waiver could possibly be prohibit the construction yeah. of this thing. The height, you've got the right. height, you've got the density, you've got the setbacks, everything's mm -hmm. gonna fit within that. Right, I don't see either, I don't see any situation where there would be a minor waiver. No, I mean, a minor amendment of some sort. Right. It might even be administratively helped or right. dealt with. If right. uh, your awning, uh, awning layout changed or something <coughs> like that. Mm -hmm. can't, blame, can't blame me for asking. Right. <laughs> Like it's that, that is something we've, say no to. we've set up a process so that minor changes can happen I saw that. at the waiver level that's that is right. definitely a board action. If a yeah. waiver was tripped, you'd be back here. Yeah. Yep. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Understood. This language at the back end about the decision pairing with the land. And I assume, I don't have a problem adding it, but I assume that that's what the zoning did anyways, right? Yeah, I mean, that it's to be assumed when they record this decision that it runs with the land. Yeah. So. Um. I don't know if there's an issue adding it, but I don't have a problem adding that language. Because I think it's sort of implied by all of the zoning that's built to make this project happen. So there's a comment in here that you added, Julie, about um, uh, on page 13 about um, hard pipe gas grills. Uh, yeah, they would they would like them if the fire department will allow them on the roof deck. That came from you. They came from them. Oh. Those are requests yeah. if allowed by the fire department. Yeah, there was a no in there that said no grills whatsoever on the premises, pretty much. Um, and I've actually spoke with the fire department briefly about that on our initial meetings, and they said, you know, along with the hard pipe, they're okay with it, but they'd like to review the plan okay. first. So, we'll leave it up to mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. So I'd have to reword that a little bit to, like, allow mm -hmm. that possibility for that discussion to happen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which I'll do. Just a nice amenity for residents. Definitely. Yeah, one question, Mr. Chairman, on one of the conditions just for discussion purposes. It's on page 10, it's 5A. And it says a flow of units must be dispersed throughout the development project that's obviously required and, and uh, no problem. But then it says it'd be comparable in initial construction quality and exterior design to um, unrestricted units. So normally on these projects, they have to be constructed you know outside same materials but a lot of times some of the amenities inside might not be granted would be for mica or you know um, not that you will put in the market rate unit which is traditionally acceptable to DHCD to certify these units and I just didn't that that language just seemed a little bit kind of what was meant by that where it said initial construction quality 
I don't yeah, think I, I made this that. up, actually. I didn't read that as finishes, though. Yeah, and that, that's fine. I, did, I didn't know what it meant. I was just... Yeah, I mean, it means that you're going to insulate it the right way, and it's going to be con constructed using the same quality, say, framing materials and exterior materials, so it's waterproof and weatherproof. Okay. Uh, sound insulated the same as the other ones, but it's definitely the interior finishes that change. That's fine. Typically. Yeah. That's how I've always interpreted that. The exterior... You can envision some other type of project, maybe something that's more townhouse-like, where you've got much more variability in the modules, and you might start changing what's happening outside. Mm -hmm. Not in this one. You think there's requirement for it, Julie? I don't think I made this one up. Sounds so, like it came um, right out of yeah. might be might be a requirement on the uh, audio. Yeah. yeah. But like, I mean, when we do the inspections of affordable housing units for these we understand that some of the finishes and options in the units might be a little different yeah and that language is yeah. fine and then you know because it could be go both ways so if julie finds a requirement you know i don't think we can get around the requirement requirement we haven't asked for a waiver from that requirement i believe so. the requirements are 40 b's and 40 r allows you to um, alter the finishes mm -hmm. right but 40 b does not allow you to do that How many affordable units? There's eight. That's a little over 25 percent. Right Rental? Rental. 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 Yes. You're going to make up for the cost of the granite by not replacing the plastic laminate every three years. <laughs> well, I was thinking more like granite and quartz. Quartz stains. Not <laughs> Mm -hmm. yeah. right. Any other comments or questions on this decision? No. 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 Comments from the public? Yes. Yes. Uh, public hearing. Move that the CPDC close the public hearing for the Downtown Smart Growth District Plan Review for 467 Main Street. For a second. Somebody else? Okay. All in favor? Motion to approve this um, decision. Motion amended. I, I'm sorry, before we go on there, did we, um, Julie, you were going to change the condition on lighting, correct? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I made a note to, okay. to just um, say they need to send the specs to me of the lighting pictures for approval. Yep. Mm -hmm. It's in here. Move that the CBDC approve the uh, decision for the downtown smart growth. Uh, plan at 467 Main Street as amended. Inclusive of waivers requested. Do uh, you want to go through the waivers and vote on them? Okay. We've done that. The decision. Okay. So, so vote. Waiver uh, for the density. All in favor of waiving the density to 20 to 75.6. Okay. <laughs> <All right. laughs> the building height waiver. We worded this to say uh, 48 feet plus or minus with the northwest portion of the parapet no higher than 50 feet. All in favor? All in favor? And we're waiving the off street commercial loading. For a second. I don't think it's to do that, by the way. <laughs> you just wave them. You think you just vote for the waivers with the second of All right, sure. Uh -huh. <laughs> All in favor? All opposed? <laughs> and uh, tree removal. To allow certain trees to be removed in, in order to construct the building where all healthy trees over six inches in caliber are required to be preserved. And we've got language where we're going to work with the town to relocate the trees. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Get some parking and get some storefronts and stuff to think about. Yeah. It's yeah. important. Uh, second on that. Second. All in favor? Okay. No. No. Okay. No. 
Uh, Move there. The CPDC approved the decision as amended. Second for the discussion. Oh, okay. <laughs> All in favor? Opposed? Yeah. All set. Thank you very much. Thank you, John. Thank you, John. Thank you very much. Yeah, I got that. Yeah, I got that. <laughs> I was like, oh, God. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Thank you very much. Thanks for all your time. Good luck. Sorry, I didn't look at the No, that's all right. It's, um, it's not a big deal. And then let's see. Just a second. Uh, uh, next up is minor amendment for the PD special permit for Johnson Woods. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to remind the board that I have uh, accused myself. And removed yourself. And removed myself. Yeah, there's a bar back there. With <laughs> <laughs> Beverages and food. Yes. Yeah. Snacks and refreshments in <laughs> your refrigerator. Okay. So. Julie, where do we stand on this one? Um, there are three main issues under discussion with this. Um, one of them is the parking issues at the multifamily buildings. The other one is the foundation issue on White Oaks Lane. And the third is um, an unfulfilled promise of a garage for 162 Johnson Woods Drive. Um, the applicant has requested that the discussion of the foundation for White Oaks Lane be not be had tonight and be had continued next time um, because they haven't had they haven't been able to come to a, a, any sort of solution or whatever with the um, a butter and the potential buyer um, and they would like to have some more in feedback to be able to give you for that discussion but I we should still go forward with discussing the other two aspects of this okay. project tonight um, that's where we Okay. Um. Well, uh, <coughs> my name is Brad Latham, here on behalf of the uh, property owner, Johnson Woods, I should say. Uh, Ted apologizes he can't be here, he's out of the state tonight. With Bill Bergeron, the project engineer, is with me. Uh, as uh, you understand, there were two items that were before you. One related to the foundation and a question of the abutters, whether well, that's the appropriate location. Uh, we've had ongoing discussions with them. Uh, we've requested to continue for two weeks. We're going to have those further discussions and perhaps uh, go on site and see if we can work out that issue with them. So uh, I believe we're requesting that simply be put over to your next meeting. The only other item of which we're involved in uh, that we're aware of relates to the parking spaces, uh, outside parking spaces near uh, three buildings. Uh, and uh, basically, the major problem that we heard initially was that the parking spaces were too narrow. Um, and we, we framed a request that it be waivered to allow certain parking spaces to remain less than nine feet. Uh, we've withdrawn that request uh, that we're going to agree that all the parking spaces uh, out in that area would be nine feet in width. Uh, however, there's certain reconfigurations that Bill would like to go through with you. And we're requesting that uh, you folks hopefully will be satisfied with that proposal so we can proceed on that basis. But uh, in any event, the statement is that in the spring, when weather permits, all the spaces will be restriped and repainted so they all conform to the nine foot width. Thank you. Bill? My name is William Bergeron with the firm of Hayes Engineering. Julie, could you just put on the other one first, please? Sure. This one? Yes. Okay. So at the original meeting that we had, um, you had requested that we do an as-built plan for what was actually out there in the field. And this plan reflects as-built conditions for the structures, the curb line, and the parking spaces. And what we've done is I've given a two-page memo that actually outlines where all the parking spaces are. The net effect of, the, of this building is that there was nine spaces put in on this particular section of, of uh, parking when there was supposed to only be eight. So there's a net loss of one parking space there. As Brad indicated, 
all of the any of the spaces that are non-conforming with the nine foot width will be blacked out and relined in the spring to be nine foot spaces so the net result of the parking in front of this structure is that we lost one parking space on this bank the second part of, of parking associated with this is there were four parking spaces approved with the original construction of this project here for whatever reason we ended up with marking six parking spaces there so the request is that we install previous pavers and allow the construction of two additional parking spaces here so there would be an increase in previous area it just would be an increase in the number of parking spaces all being nine feet in and width the number of parking spaces that are provided for that facility i, I kind of run through the the uh, tallying of this um, there are 38 units so there's 76 parking spaces required there's 44 spaces in the garage there's 12 exterior garages here there are six additional parking spaces here and there's a total of uh, 21 surface parking spaces including those so we end up with a total of 83 parking spaces where there's 76 required so we have seven extra parking spaces so we're proposing to add two parking spaces here as i indicated uh, to get that up so there'll be a nine extra parking spaces relative to what the the zoning requires in addition to the parking that's associated with this there are three visitor parking spaces here and those were basically the ones that we've designated as visitor parking spaces for this unit so there's actually 12 spaces extra associated with this building the next building again this has all been constructed there was one additional parking space put in this bank of parking again so we will have a reduction of one parking space within that when it's relined these were all the right parking, right number of parking spaces so for that building we have 44 interior we have 11 exterior and we've got uh, 22 surface spaces for a total of 77 parking spaces there's 36 units there so we were required to have 72 so we've got extra parking spaces for this in addition to the parking spaces we have two visitor spaces here associated with this building and then we've had two designated spaces for the rubbish compactor building which is right here which are designated these are all designated visitor spaces with signage on the ground as it currently exists so that meets or exceeds what the requirement is for the two two for for one the next these two buildings are built and constructed and occupied the next slide is for the building that was that's under construction do you want me to zoom in a little bit can you just tell us what the addresses are is it yeah this is 16 taylor and the other two are the two it's in memo but the 30 and 39, 30 and 39 taylor so this building is the foundation is constructed the garages have been installed uh, the rough grading of this has been completed here Talbot Lane has been paved to bind it to the end of the roadway and what we had proposed on this if you remember several years ago when we came we ended up with a common room in the in the in number 30 uh, for just a meeting room so we ended up taking one unit out of that and we ended up putting it in this building and then we ended up on Green Meadow Drive bringing one unit over to the end of this uh, so those were previously approved but when we did that we really didn't address the parking at, the, at that particular time so on this building we have um, 37 units so we need 74 parking spaces the way it was approved 
we actually had 70 parking spaces, so we were basically on the space four shot. If you don't consider the the visitor parking spaces that are around it, so what we had proposed in this, and this is under construction, so that none of this has been done yet, is to add one parking space on the right hand side, one parking space on the left hand side to gain two spaces in front of the building. We had four visitor parking spaces here, which would remain as visitor parking spaces, and we were proposed to put three more parking spaces on Talbot that would be associated with the building. So that would be an addition of five parking spaces, which gets us up over the two-for-one requirement. The four visitor spaces probably were, when we were looking at it, we were just thinking that that was part of that, but we had designated them as visitors, so we didn't want to count them as part of the that building. We also have two visitor parking spaces here that are associated with that, so we do have six visitor parking spaces there. We did want to increase the number of parking spaces there because we do have this park area that's here that's been constructed. So in case someone wanted to actually, particularly a handicapped person, if they wanted to park closer to the park area, that they would have a parking place either here or over there so they could use the facility. Um, the patios, the fire pits, the landscaping has all been done very well on these. I'm sure that Julian has been out there that she can attest that it's to a high degree uh, quality. So those were our parking. I mean, none of, none of this, these have been lined on the ground because the pavement's not there yet. So all of those would be parking spaces at nine feet other than what would be required for the handicapped parking spaces. So the minor modifications that we're asking for is the addition of these two the addition of these three, so it's five associated with this building, and then the two extra spaces on the other building. And then all of the parking spaces, as soon as we can in the spring, on the existing paved areas would be watered out and, and painted to a nine-foot space. Again, this re reflects as-built conditions of these things. Look. All of these proposed spaces on the unbuilt section are the correct width, so you yes. have accommodated all the nine. All nine by 18. Mr. Chairman, our request is if the uh, commission <coughs> finds its way to approve the proposed changes as uh, mentioned by Bill in his memo. We're also asked to provide an updated landscaping plan, which was provided. Thoughts on that parking, those parking modifications? No, well, I have no concern with the plan. I'm not sure that the residents would agree, but I mean, it certainly is it's a reasonable <coughs> plan. Okay, we'll take some public comments in a second. There are no, obviously there are no residents here. This is all unconstructed. Mm -hmm. And the addition of the parking spaces that we're talking about is the, where the fire access room is. There's no David. No. Other than the big buildings, there's no immediate residents that are, would be affected by that. They're actually using it as six parking spaces now. So they're real cramped spaces. We're just trying to widen them out so they can each have the nine feet. Okay. Mr. Brad, are you asking us to break up the decision? Are you asking us to make a decision on parking now and then continue the other portion of it? Because I don't think we're going to do that. We're going to keep all the issues together. The only reason we were we were here were, was two items. One was the foundation issue, and the other was the parking. As I understand it, there may be some issues on the building permit delayed until we resolve the parking. I'm not sure that's accurate. Yes. Um, yeah, we're not get. We need to get this resolved so that we can get the building permit issue for this. The foundation's in, but we can't get the 
the next part of it. Did you just allow them to resolve the misplaced foundation? But that's a separate building permit. The misbuilding permit. Right, but you put that in the wrong place. So what what leverage do we have to say make you move it if we want you to move it? What if the resolution is to move it? Then it'll get moved. This foundation's where it belonged. Okay. If this, this is not this the is foundation. The foundation oh. issue. I understand. Oh, okay. But there's a this sort of this overall oh, yeah. overall activity that's going on on site that should be kept together. Otherwise, you yeah, know, we're yeah. just approving little bits of it. And we keep missing little pieces, and I think that um, I think it should just be done as one one uh, approval. I, you can't I, I strike this until the spring. I'm a little confused as to why creating conforming parking uh, for a building under construction is tied to a foundation issue. I mean, if there are sanctions to be imposed for a foundation being in the wrong place, we can't strike an, an agreement with the abutter, that issue has to be addressed, obviously. It can't stay the way it is. Um, but it seems to me this is a totally unrelated issue. It just happens to be the same site, a massive site, but it's got nothing to do with that problem. So if we say, okay, go ahead, your parking solution is approved, what levers do we have to enforce that if we're not withholding something from you? If the foundation is in the place that wasn't approved, there's a violation of I'm talking about the parking. So like... You don't get an occupancy permit. Well, you already have one for two of the multifamily buildings, which is where we're having the most complaints because people live there and can't get out of their cars. So, I mean, what am I missing here? This, this parking reconfiguration includes parking at the other two buildings right. that are occupied. Right. Oh, see, your concern is that they won't restripe in the spring. Is that the concern? I have no reason to think that they would. Well, um, I have no authority to say so, but I would think maybe posting a bond of a reasonable amount to get it done. I mean, this, this is going to have to happen. Uh, there's an acknowledgement that if they aren't nine feet wide, uh, if the concern is leverage, then that's the financial way to get leverage. I mean, I, I don't know what it would cost to black out and repaint. I'm sure it's not terribly expensive. Um, but if, a, if a, you need a, a bond of $5,000 or something to have more motivation to do it, it seems to me that would be the motivation. $5,000 is the motivation for this development. I mean, throw $5,000 away and reframing something. I don't know. What are the thoughts here? One's not a bad idea, but I'd go five to ten grand on this one at least. What's that? I said five to ten on this one. Easy for a bond. She's suggesting that the bond be larger. $10,000 and it would have to be done by June 1st. With that. That sounds reasonable. Who would be doing the work? <coughs> Do you have a contractor that would be doing this work? Yeah, the same one that did, didn't originally. So, what about a signed contract with that contractor that says the work's going to be done and... That's fine. On top of what we just said, we'll add that you know, on. Similar sure, to absolutely. like a construction yep. contract that says this is when it's going to happen, right. this is the scope of the work, this is the plan that's being followed. That's fine. That's fair. That's so, then, but that, so then you're still before us for a minor amendment for the foundation issue. Like that's not getting taken off the table. These, right. I mean, I, yeah. Okay. I just want to make that clear. Like, it's understood. Okay. Understood. Yeah, I didn't think that that would go away. Right. I just wanted to say that on TV. <laughs> that's being scrutinized by the abutter too. That's not going to go away. Right. That's going to be resolved. All right. So what's going on with? Well, let's, let's talk about this parking restart thing. First of all, does everyone does everyone accept that that plan works? It certainly improves the circumstance. Whether it solves the residence problem is not something that we can necessarily deal with. Well, let's um, let's take some public comments on just that piece of it right now. Can, are there any public comments related to restarting? parking at the three buildings 
to be their original nine foot width. What other issues were not addressed by that? I'm sorry. I should have restated the rules. So make sure you state your name and address, and then make sure that you sign them in the back so we get your name correct and for record. Thank you. Laura Neumeyer, 35. I just have a question about the um, the two additional that they want to put in. Where there are I don't know how the small amount existing by 39 um, by the 39 building. Building 39. Yeah. They want to add two. And, two they spaces. want to add two. Uh, there's a few kind of around the corner. From the okay, Julie, could you go back to the previous? Mm -hmm. one? The ones that are these? Yes. Uh -huh. um, you mentioned that there'd be less impervious ground. Um, I do know that there's a wetland there, and there's a um, a place where the river comes in, and the water gathers there. I, mean, who, um, I guess. I know it doesn't seem like it would be a lot more impervious ground, but I'm wondering if you're going to remove trees for it no. because it's also a wooded area. No, it isn't. This is basically grass. The grass would go. It's, the grass would go to just. Okay, so there'd be no. There's no, woods there's behind no, it. There's woods behind it. There's yeah. wetlands that are over here. Mm -hmm. This activity is not even within the 100 foot buffer or any okay. wetland area, and it's just basically grass right now that would be just turned into forest pavers. Are they letting you count the forest pavers? Yeah, so why the forest pavers? Just because we didn't want to have more impervious area there. We thought it would be less intrusive. Yeah. What is this line? That's the 100 foot buffer zone from the wetland. This is the zone of casual vegetation. Non disturbance. Yeah. Yeah, the, the solid line that cuts across the. the no. That's the, the town boundary. To that's town, okay. Yeah. That's what I thought. That was. This was the deal that we had to. I remember that, yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Enough said. Other questions related to the restriping of the parking? Sarah Koski, uh, 39 Taylor. To the right of the front of Taylor, those spots are also eight feet. If those are made into nine, are they still going to fit the same amount of spots on that side? They will be. They they're going to be nine foot spaces, all of them. Yes. Where are they getting the extra space? They're losing a space. They're losing. A space. They're, losing a space. they're losing. We're losing a space. Okay. So I heard you talk about on the left there's side one, losing a space. There's one space lost here, and then basically I think. The handicap parking space had more space than it needed, so it would be taken so up. So, if you own a deeded spot up front, you can get bumped down below to where those new two spots are. I don't know what the arrangements were for parking. I understand. Thanks. So, my understanding of what's being proposed is that they're actually going back to what was originally approved on the site and then they're adding a couple of things to the yes. fire access lanes and um, but that does bring up the question of have these extra spaces they've crammed in already been deeded to people and is that going to be that's not really your issue because it's a legal issue but what other spin-off problems are going to be created by this um, so I'm sure you guys have looked into this you're talking about the private rights yeah. Sorry. If, if, if the spaces are deeded and you have one in front, now you need to move to somewhere else. It looks like, I guess, two potentially deeded spaces would have to move somewhere. I don't believe any spaces are deeded. Okay. Uh, they're assigned. Uh, but absolutely, if there's a private right, it's going to be honored. <clears throat> They're not deeded, they're just rented. You just, you can. Sorry, I, I have a problem at this point. Yeah, I'm having a trouble with my throat tonight. <coughs> um, so they aren't deeded, but they have been assigned. Somebody That's has correct. been assigned a space that they're paying for. Uh, they have some contract to rent one of these spaces. So they have a right to use a particular space. That's correct. Okay. And that, that right is going to be honored okay. on, on the terms of the contract. So is it a separate document? Regarding the parking, so people own their units, but then they rent parking spaces. No, no they're assigned. They they are assigned a particular space. Like if a person has a particular need, they might get a certain space. They can be reassigned at a later date if it's appropriate. Assigned how though? Assigned by the condominium association. 
So you just basically get a letter that says your space is this one? Yeah, it could be it could be in the deed when someone first gets it. It could be by a, a separate uh, grant. Ted okay. mentioned that last time, I think. Pardon? Ted mentioned last time that he has the right to reassign people's right, spaces. He probably does have the right to reassign. That's correct. Um, and he is he the association currently? I'm sorry. Is Ted <coughs> the association? Yes, he's still it's still under his control. The only way, the only other way to solve that is to start paving more areas, and I'm not sure what the grades are on this. Um, so, if there are the correct number of spaces and they are the right size, those were the two things. The size seemed to be the biggest issue that I heard last time. So, if they're the correct size, that solves at least the problem of being able to park. But if there is the right number of spaces, then at least everyone can park. And I understand that you may be inconvenienced by having to slide down a few spaces or not park in your old space. That's definitely not within our <clears throat> within our purview, for sure. Is there a concern beyond that? Beyond just having to park somewhere else? No, I mean, there, there's definitely not enough parking in general. You know, three visitor spots for a 36 unit building just isn't. Um, but then when, in regards to the size, those six spots that are down below is like further than the visitors parking and it's pitch black down there and so the people who have had to park down there who can't get a spot up front then have no choice well, i guess it is their choice to then pay for parking in the garage during the winter because it's so dark and you can't you know it's walking up the hill or walking through the building and it's really inconvenient that you're better off in a visitor spot than in what you've been assigned so my fear is that i am in the front I'm one of those who can't open my car door, and now I'm going to get pushed down below into where they're making the two new spots. Are you saying there's extra spots in the garage to rent? Yeah, for like four fifty a month or something crazy. Awesome. I'm going to buy me a garage. <laughs> <laughs> City of Boston, right? Yeah. Oh, last I checked, there were some available. I'm not positive. Okay. Uh, other comments regarding this restriping? Um, okay. I'm not sure there's there. another. Yeah, I mean, I drove around the site today. Get a sense for things. I don't know any other solution other than to go back to the originally approved plan, which provided the number of parking spaces that were required. And then we just don't get involved with how those are allocated. Um, hopefully, when you have a condo association that doesn't involve a developer, you can figure out a better way to allocate them. I don't know what else to do there. You know, without starting to regrade things and then start well, excavating and paving. You know, so. well, we this solution was trying to be the disruptive <coughs> to what was previously approved. I mean, basically, we're going back to what was originally approved, trying to get two different spaces that people had been using. Because six people had been parking there. If you take two away, it kind of looked like we got two less parking spaces, but we were actually four spaces were the ones that were Well, you know, I don't see any better alternative. It also sounds like people are parking on the street, and they're not supposed to. I thought I saw a comment about that. But unless the fire department wants to get involved, or review it and say that the parking on that street is an issue. Um, it's something that the people can do. I didn't drive through it. I guess you might have to wait for somebody to come towards you if you had a whole line of cars on one side, but it still seemed workable and it seemed like it just slowed down traffic. Okay. Um, 
<laughs> that's, the, that's the parking issue. We're not discussing the foundation, but what about this garage issue that came up last time? The sighting of a building? We, we don't have anything to do with the... Uh, are you talking about the, somebody that came in later? <clears throat> On, uh, what's it? Right, so... Um, that's not a request of... Uh, but if owner. Ted is ever to fulfill this promise, it does involve the signing of another structure on this property, which is something you would review. Right. Um, which is why I feel like there's no better time than the present. I think that building needs to be cited. That building, the new garage needs to be cited. It needs to be shown on the plan somewhere. Right, right. and the, and the building hasn't been built. I'm sorry? The building hasn't been built yet. Right, so where's it going to go? <coughs> it's going to, he, he has to come back and design where it's going to be. Yeah, it's, it's, but right. it's essentially been a sketch plan between potential buyer and Ted with no plans have been designed or submitted and Ted was uh, adamant about the fact that you know the application would have to come through him to this as a modification to the site plan. And but that process has not started yet. He has not added, he hasn't authorized me to do it and the architect is going to design the garage to make it compatible with the other structures that are there. I mean, we don't want a prefab Home Depot garage sitting in the front of our units. So, right, but you aren't going to do that. It's going to be a separate application. So, I, I'll, I'll, I'll get you, I promise that. I know, I'll sit. I'm happy to. Um, the question is when? Right, but when's that going to come up? You're going to come back for it'll, that? It'll come up in, in due course. The building hasn't been built yet. Building permit hasn't been issued. Uh, this is a process. This is a phase we development. We didn't issue a building permit for your PUD. All of these projects get re reviewed before they get building permits. Right. right. You don't right. get a building permit so here. You get a approval to put a building somewhere. That's correct. But he comes before you. Uh, he has as he's, as he's going to change that which was approved, uh, which you'd have to do in this case. But it's too early. He, he's not. He hasn't had built designed anything yet. It's well, too early in the process. I think what you hear the concern is certainly right. Um, uh, making representations that there can be a building put there. I, I guess really the process. He's got the process set up wrong because he's not going to go approve. Um, someone to go design it until he has some authorization that a building can even go there, right? So we should be looking at the footprint on the on that, mm -hmm. just like we do everything else, site plan, sort of a site plan review, um, and and before you go start spending money on that, and that's what seems like Agreed. the disconnect. Is, Agreed. Right? But he hasn't. Someone has started the process when he is the one that starts the process. The only thing that I've seen is a ballpoint sketch mm -hmm. of yep. something on our plans done by someone else. Period. That's the extent of what I know about this garage. <coughs> done by whom? I, I don't know. Well, Ted said he did it. Ted yeah. did it. We it, saw it, him it, do it. Yes. It, but it's a ballpoint it's sketch. No, not even to scale on the, on the plan. So when he tells me <coughs> to do a design so we can have a basic plot plan to submit to you, for approval, he was going to go through that process, but he has not done that yet. Okay. We have comments on this one. Thank you. Thank you for asking. Um, so, uh, the someone that marked the plan was Ted. Um, approached the DS in front of Nick and drew it on his own, um, and it was reflected in the minutes. So that Ted was the person who drew it. Um, I've submitted to the commission uh, the location that Mr. Moore had originally um, suggested, which he staked and had DigSafe provide, which I sent to the commission. I don't know if you've had a chance to review that, but this is, this is my condominium. I guess I'll stand here. This is my condominium. These are the stakes placed by Mr. Moore. This is the dig safe, and um, if we refer to the minutes, um, in those minutes, um, he suggested that I was inaccurate about the placement of the garage being directly in front of my condominium, which you can see that's my condominium, and these are the stakes. 
Um, I thought it would be helpful perhaps to provide you with here is the steak, here's another steak. Um, and that obviously is the front yard of my my condominium unit. And here's another. These are the stakes that were placed by Mr. Moore. These are the stakes that were placed by me using the drawing, the architectural drawing that Mr. Moore provided to me on Thursday. So this is not a prefab um, illustration. This was done by Mr. Moore's architect. And I think everyone would agree is very attractive and is equally as acceptable to me as the location he proposed. Um, so, let's see. The location he proposed on the map, this is what it looks like. Um, this is what it looks like right now. This is my condominium. This is the tree, these are the trees that are on the site plan, which I can show you. Um, and this is another visual of that. Thanks for your I can provide that to you. Um, and then I do have a plot plan um, that was generated also by Mr. Moore. Um, so that if, that's, if you'd like to see that, so that you can understand where the stakes are that he proposed, which I suggested in the, which I stated in the meeting on December 11th, were directly in front of my garage, and Mr. Moore contradicted me and said, no, this was the location I had always proposed, which is the, um, the location that you see in the picture. So at that meeting, as reported in the minutes, I said that that location would be acceptable to me. He's provided me with an architectural drawing that's also acceptable to me. So I think that's the problem is that this is not, has not been engineered. I believe there's utilities that are in the location of where this is. So that's why Ted said not to, he didn't authorize him to go forward, didn't know what was going to happen with this. So apparently Valleco has done a garage of size. But in the normal order of things, yes. That's what he wants to build. He tells me about where he wants to put it we end up engineering it to make sure it doesn't interfere with any other utilities and things. That stuff just hasn't happened yet. And then that application would go to you for whatever you deemed it, whether it's a minor modification or whether it's a, a hearing process or, or, or what. One comment that you made earlier, you talked about a proposed buyer. Um, I, I, I am the I buyer. Didn't know that I didn't know that you had bought it. I bought it six years ago. I thought that because the, your seller is part of his, isn't your seller part of his um, model units? Um, do you have a basement in yours? I do. I'm, I own my building. I've owned it for six years. And in the purchase and sale, we agreed that he would construct a single car garage. Um, and so that's. That's six years ago, and I've been trying to get this done for six years. So anyway, um, so it's not as if there hasn't been plenty of time to engineer and do all the things properly, as so you suggest. I'm looking at this, okay. This plan L1? Yes. This is supposed to be current? Well, that's the one that was delivered. I realize why I was not able to get my bearings on this. So there's, there's a utility building of some sort. Is it right here? Right, it's a big old garage. That's, that's the existing five. building that's there. So this is not here. No, the structure. This is the landscaping plan for the entire site. When, when it's, it's supposed completed. To be, when it's completed. Yeah. And is, that, is that what you were looking for? Something. I think you're looking for a more current plan. Current up to date landscaping plan. Yes, that's what we asked for. Is that the plan? Is the proposal that in the building number five is going to be built? Is the utility building going to be built? Yeah. 
Okay. Now that that's an existing that's an existing bond part of the site that was originally constructed. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm just I was just trying to get my bearings. Just have a rush. It's here. I can um, I can yeah. do it better on this. I'm so sorry. Oh yeah, this is forty, and this is twenty. That really transformer thing is made of rubber trees. There's some yeah. trees in there. You know, this is, uh, it's actually pretty visible here. And here's why, here's why I want to address this. You're having issues with the foundation. I think it's this building here. Is that right? No. Quite outside. It's this foundation against yes. that guy, right? Like way over here, though. Yes. Oh, yeah, so, the, so there's an issue here now with the proximity of the foundation that's been put in place with the expectations of where that we're going to be. And my concern with not siting this garage is that you're creating the exact same condition right up against building number, I think this is 13, maybe? Well, here to, here's a real issue is that he continues to make changes, having discussions about changing the master plan of this approved plan constantly without thinking through this issue, without thinking through this issue. So wh wh what good is this right now to us? Nothing, because everything is constantly changing. We can't continue to make piecemeal decisions because he's giving it to us piecemeal. That's not the way that planned unit developments are supposed to work. <coughs> Here's a plan, work the plan. Stop monkeying here, 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 and here. That's why when Nick says, no, we want to look at all of this stuff together, is why we want to look at it together because we're being piecemealed to death and having all of these issues, not because any one particular issue is bad, it's because it's it's all piecemeal. You can't do a planned unit development piecemeal. That's the that's the wrong I, approach. I, I, I think that I mean obviously That's the frustration, I'm sorry. No no I, I no I, I understand you know, that. I, obviously this was this was a large development. It's taken fourteen years from yeah. where we are. The markets change is when we came back here because originally we had a lot of quads and we had a lot of triplexes we had a lot of, and the market just didn't want that that's why we came back to reconfigure how things looked and and it has to morph as the market changes so you know when there's a couple hundred units <coughs> in a long build-up period it's not like you're doing a 10 lot subdivision where, you, where everything's going to be done in a two-year period there's a long cycle that goes with this. So obviously, he's always tried to maintain trees and site the buildings as, as, as uniquely on the property to, to make everything fit the best way. And yes, he's taken more liberties than he probably should have with the adjustment. <laughs> Which I think we all get is that, you know, it's a long project, it's big, it's sort of, but it, it goes back to the let's, I don't, I think what you hear is that we, we want to look at this. I mean, we, he continues to bring things back piecemeal. There were a few years where you were here. You were here. I mean, we, we, yeah. we successfully did 454 units at Reading Woods. What's the problem here? I, I guess for myself, if I can speak to the issue um, about my garage, it was six years ago. I tried to negotiate in good faith about a location. I'm flexible about, I, I never agreed. I mean, I'd have to be completely insane to agree to have a garage put in my front yard. Um, so that was never agreed upon. I paid. Um, you know, I paid, I paid, I've already paid for a garage that six years later um, is still not constructed. Mr. Moore pointed out a location um, at this meeting. I agreed to that location and um, 
So I guess I'm a little, he provided me with a plan that I feel is, I agreed to that location in front of all of these people. Um, Mr. Moore insisted that I was incorrect about the location and that this was the location and I agreed to that location and then he provided me with a suitable architectural drawing by the people that do architectural drawings for him. So I guess I just, I, you know, how much longer <coughs> does it take to do, build one car garage when he can do all of this? So let's talk this through a little bit about how we can figure this out. I'm sorry, did, did you have any comments? No, I'm fine. Um, I can assure you that we will not approve the garage location that's in front of that building. Right, so there's a three stem paper birch, like right here, I think that's what it's called. Mm -hmm. There's a whole bunch of evergreens right next to it, and there's a slope that comes back down to this unit. Mm -hmm. So there's some something significant has to happen for that garage to fit in there. So I, I am amenable to another location um, if it's if the commission is open to it and it's acceptable to Mr. Moore, um, and that location I can I have to use. So if this is if this is my so it's unit um, number six. So if number six is me and I'm on the end mm -hmm. at 162. Directly across, there's unit number 62 and unit number 40. Number 62 is a proposed building. Right in between 40 and 62, there is 50, um, 50 feet, if the scale is actually one inch. The garage that Mr. Moore proposed is 12 feet wide, the 15 feet on either side that you recommend that brings us to 42 that brings us to 42 feet so there is room for the garage that Mr. Moore and, proposed. And I understand that, but now what that would do is that would create the same issue that this person is having 40 and 52 is with they but, bought a unit. But they are here. Space. They don't. This hasn't been built yet. So none of this these have built. been built. This is built. Yes. This is Ted Moore's sister. Um, and if that isn't acceptable, then if this was attached to that, but there's nobody here, and there's nobody behind, and there's nobody in front, so it seems yeah, like that could work. Those alternative conversations with Ted. No. When I suggested to Mr. Moore that we discuss other locations he told me that we could move the building that was in front of my so garage two to See, three inches so in any direction buildings. he's making agreements to move buildings when he doesn't know he's going to get that permission so, so you want built none of no, these no, no nothing none is these. built none of, none of these are built so so can we can, can i suggest so <clears throat> we can't approve your garage where your garage goes that's not in our purview you know um, um uh, you know it's absolutely correct it's not per from our purpose right here. It is not a, an application. I mean, we don't we don't have that. We have nothing except for that time when he you know sketched it on here. Yeah. Right. Well, we can't tell so, where it probably but, won't go. Yeah. And I guess the the what we're trying to give you feedback is you know do having all these little side conversations about moving the things. The only conversation it, I and have um, it um, is is if he wants to start making changes he we're we don't want to be in a situation like that where he decides to move a, a foundation again mm -hmm. on his own because he, that's just not going to fly and it's just and, and it sounds like he you know there he may be working in that direction again so you know i guess we urge him we can't resolve your your um um your garage issue um, that really is between, between, um, between at this point between the two of you. Um, uh, so I guess the only thing I would ask is, um, to be honest with you, despite the fact that I've paid for it, um, it's very. I, I don't know how likely it is when I've negotiated in good faith with Mr. Moore for six years. So any leverage that the commission is willing to, to 
help with is greatly appreciated. I think you all, I mean, if you did, anyway, you are on here, so I don't need to I, I, so I learned about you. this Friday afternoon. <clears throat> Uh, I'm more than happy to. I can't hear. I'm sorry, I can't hear what Ted oh, said. I learned about this Friday afternoon. Mm -hmm. I'd be more than happy to have a conversation with Ted Moore. I, mean, I understand what what the issue is. Um, I heard the facts differently, um, and so I'm persuaded what yeah. the lady says is correct. Um, so I'd be more than happy to have a conversation with Ted and uh, see if we can't resolve this. It's, it's got to be solved. Yeah. What I've said is is a matter of record. It's. I mean, it was. It's on I'm public not, access and I'm all not, of that. Why yeah. Taking six years to resolve this. But I, I, I don't represent Ted in the sale, so I, I don't. Well, it is. It is. All of the minutes are accessible to you. I mean, all of this information well, is I'm online. You. I'm not you. No, but it's all there. Is is it possible to compel him to at least apply for this? As part of this. Right, but minor that goes to the whole point of leverage. Mm -hmm. He. Um, He's going to have to come in for something else. And you could say, you know, until no. this corner, how, how do you... What I'm saying is, can we say, prior to final C of O for some building or whatever, he has to submit an application He's got to come in for with, a else, you... with a plot plan and an architectural drawing and uh, engineered so there's no utilities in the way. All the things they mentioned are holding this up before he gets like a C of O or something related to what's before you right now. What's, um, what's approved for 52? Just a foundation? Or does he have the whole building? Does no, he does business? not have a building permit for that. Not have a building permit. Just a foundation permit. It's not a foundation permit. And we, so and we, we issued a stop order. order. It was an erroneous. Okay, so he can't, he's going to, you guys are trying to resolve the issue between. That, that's not going to go anywhere on that foundation to let issues resolve. Correct. Right. Correct. Yeah, that's because our inspectors went out there and made sure that it was cease and desist. I, I understand. But the owner's got, the adjacent owner has a taken arms, if you will. Yes. yes. So they have to resolve that, and then he's going to have to figure out what that means. Either dig up the foundation or compensation or something, whatever. They'll come to an agreement, and then he's going to have to come back in for the rest of the building permit, right? Yes. Yep. Right. For modification for the footprint, right. so for condition. I mean, that's why I'm trying to. I I, I know that the right I know that they have only applied for the parking and the foundation. Um, There's visitor parking on your side of the street along that curve, right? Yes. yes. So maybe one of those or two of those are impacted. <coughs> See, that's that's the ripple effect, right? So we were talking about parking earlier. Mm -hmm. Potentially, they have to modify some of this. There's a, there's a transformer or something, some sort of a utility right. box there. Is there a transformer? Or? There's a transformer there, and there's what? also the, the sewer line yes. that's going right <laughs> Not in the street, it's in the grass area. Really. And again, there's, I think that there's some retaining wall or some grading issues on the back on the. Um, yeah, the sports would look at that. That way. Yeah, I see. Just drop off. Yeah. So yeah. that garage is potentially a retaining wall in front of the other unit, mm -hmm. which could create the same issue that you're having now. And the someone's going to come units in Units on court place are are lower, right? Elevation wise, obviously. Right, but, but unit building number four, the last unit, it might be 13. I think it's 13 or 11. The address that back deck faces the slope. Yes, and so it's going to be a two-story garage from their perspective. And that's why I think there has to be some preliminary engineering on this. Yes, I agree. Even if you don't consider the utilities, I think placing the building and understanding what the grade and potential retaining wall issues are, that's something we should maybe compel him to do before he gets the rest of the permit for 52. Right, so do we, like prior to building permit for building 52, um, I think he needs to submit a real complete application that includes all these <coughs> things we've just mentioned. The scratch. I mean, I don't know any other way to do this, and I don't. I know that it's not necessarily our problem, um, but well, he's if he if he is ever going to fulfill this promise, he does need to get this. Here, thing I, I guess this is a way I would do it. Is that if he doesn't, I, I'm going to say use the term "come clean," and I I don't want to use that, but I'm not sure what else to say. But put all the p proposed changes that he knows about now on a plan and bring it before us, then you know what, the next one, 
the next one that comes iteratively, I, I, I would vote no. I mean, that's really, that's really where it's at, is we can't continue to do it piecemeal. So if he's, if he's working on, the, you know, um, uh, revising that corner there, and includes her, her garage or whatever, right, we don't know. That's the thing is we don't know what other things that he has. And I don't want, I don't want to see something, you know, resolve on one <coughs> corner this year and then three months later or four months later um, or six months later found out that he put a, uh, um, a foundation in, or in a wrong place and then be back at it because that's sort of, that's what I feel like we're at. So, um, you know, I, I, I don't want to keep, mm -hmm. I don't want to keep having to uh, approve things piecemeal, especially after the fact. And so I think that's really, to me, that would be my message is do as we understand things change. Do it all at once. Not the whole site, but if you're dealing with one corner, deal with everything that you've got going there so that we can look at it holistically. And you can design it holistically, um, more importantly. I, I don't know how we do that from a leverage standpoint, except that carry the message that we, you know, like there's a good possibility that we say no. We're not gonna, you know, it's, it, we don't wanna keep changing. I don't think telling him is good enough. Well, well, I mean, basically we have to put a stop on all building permits uh, and further work in that area until we have a plan that meets what's on the ground. I mean, this is planned unit development. It's not, it's not well planned and it's not being well developed. It's doing okay at the beginning. It seems that, that as he's converging on areas that require much more consideration, that consideration is not being given. You know, it's kind of easy to build in the green field and just start working right. because you've got all the room in the world. And if you start getting to those corners that get tight, mm -hmm. that's where the planning part comes in. building. Yeah. 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 Um, okay, so we're still open for any more comments. Are there any more comments related to that? Yeah. 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 yeah, I'm probably somewhere in between there. I want to be, I want to be reasonable. And I want progress to continue, but I do want some leverage because I really don't want to deal with this every <laughs> once a month because we're going to start. Are reducing our meetings. Too. Every time he's got a buyer that he wants to wheel and deal with. Yeah, the, the construction for 16 is going to be, it's a year and a half to almost two years from where we are right now. So we just wanted to get started. I mean, the foundation's been sitting there for three months. Well, our garage has been sitting unfinished for six years. <laughs> um, I guess he's lucky you're very patient. I certainly wouldn't have lived that long. <laughs> okay, so this decision that you wrote up, what does this tell us? What does this do? Um, it intertwines everything um, because I do think that these things should all be looked at together. Um, I, I need to like give it another real good look to see to see that it makes sense the way that I've written it. Um, it's, it's complicated and it's hard to hold one thing hostage for other things that might may or not be may or may not be related and involve uh, different, you know, unit owners and potential buyers and um, well, I mean we've asked it's been tricky to craft this. For, you know, but for the other issue anyway but, for the next being so I mean why don't you yeah. if, if I if I may Probably, yeah. just, just a minute, Bruce. I mean, it sounds like we the restriping the parking spaces is a s simple, more or less independent uh, thing that really shouldn't have to come before the board. It's to fix your mistake, make them the way they were supposed to be, end of that issue. And the rest of it, uh, I don't think we can deal with more at this point. Well, the, the two things I would say of that one is. So that's proposed for the spring. I mean, I know it feels like spring today, but it doesn't seem necessarily like that's going to be imminent. So why not just keep that involved in this? And okay. it, you know, I mean, it's not like spring is 
going to happen, and we're, we're going to hold that up if, we, if this takes another month. Um, and then the other thing is, I don't feel any certainty that if we say, sure, go fix it and we'll, we'll believe you, that that's going to happen. Well, we, we know better than that now. Yeah. Right. Uh, uh, my request, that having heard what I've, I've learned something tonight that wasn't aware of some of the facts, my request would be if you would at least allow the parking issue to be resolved, that's parking width and adding the, a few additional spaces that, that Ted mentions as a consequence of restriping, uh, and impose the three items we talked about, and that's number one, uh, $10,000 cash bond, number two, must be done by June the 1st, 2018, and we produced a signed contract uh, with a contractor who's going to do that work to you, so you have that evidence. Secondly, we did issue an admonition to the developer. Uh, some of the comments that were made tonight, that number number one, until that foundation issue is resolved, there'd be no building permit issued. So that, that's held up, as well as the other sanctions that you're talking about doing, if in fact he doesn't address the issue of the garage. Uh, that's That would seem to me to be a way to help the woman who wants some help. It would be a way to at least let that building proceed that really is not part of this per se, and also pass the message strong and loud, uh, the attitude. Thank you. Did you get all that, Kim? Check your notes. I don't, don't have any. <laughs> That's what I'm the accessory structure. I, I know, and then there's some issues listed at the end of the decision that have been noted as well, but we actually haven't talked about it all in this meeting, but there's an accessory building that like Glenn has issues with that has never been approved. Um, yes, it's pretty close to the entrance actually. Yeah. Um, there's, what else? Is it, uh, what's it considered? Is it just considered temporary for construction? No. Or is it running maintenance It's been it? there for a while. Yeah. yeah. Since I can remember. Yeah. 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 There it was part of the then. original spot. It just was a bond that was never taken down. But it's not on the plan. That's the problem. Well, building, building five takes its place at some point. <laughs> That's what's confusing me about that landscape yeah. plan. Yeah. Yeah. The barn. And so, so we got email about trash removal today, didn't we? We did. Yes. It's <coughs> another so, topic yeah, for like discussion. Condo association. Thing yeah. All right, Brad. Right. Trash removal. Oh, basic O and M. Increase the pickups. Let's move on. Okay. Yeah, but we, I don't think Brad knows about that. Brad's not aware of that. There's some complaints yeah. that the compactor that's serving the three buildings, that well, maybe the three buildings, is already filling up too often with just two buildings, and so they have to potentially. So, and no frequent empty? Is that what? Yeah. yeah. Unless you add another compactor. Right. Again, that's we'll just empty it. Yeah, I mean, we have. Empty it seems like an easier way. We received photos of the bags stacked up outside the building. So and that's okay. I just realized it's, it's ten o'clock. So we're going to continue this, right? We're going to try and craft yeah. this language to be what we said it's going to be, and we're going to impose some conditions on Ted to resolve the planning issues. At the very least, for that whole section that involves 162 and 50 and the, the misplaced foundation, this whole area here, I think. Needs to be looked at because if, if building 62 is not constructed, 61 is not constructed. What are the ripple effects of potentially putting the garage? Well, can you come forward? No, I, 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 you're already, okay. I'm, yeah, I mean, like yeah. there's the options that the that, that the, app, that the, yeah. uh, that the woman yeah. mentioned about the garage being in a different location. What are the implications of that to the other buildings if you start to consider those? Is it easier to build that garage onto another building or independent and not deal with utilities or that retaining wall? So that's the, probably the kind of condition we're going to throw in there to plan out this this section of space, which is already starting to see problems. Right. Right. Um, just if I could throw it out there, we, you know, we're kind of trying to navigate what to do now with this request for the building permit mm -hmm. application on, is it building 16? Yeah. 16 Taylor Drive. 16 Taylor Drive. They're waiting for their building permit, and certainly we didn't want to issue the building permit until this discussion tonight. And I'm still not sure. If when will you come back? When is the next meeting that we can have them back to resolve this piece? They could come back on the 26th. 
there's some room on the agenda. Uh -huh. Is that too long to wait for the building permit on 16? No. Two weeks for the building permit for 16. The building permit's been applied for, right? Yeah. I assume the drawing is going to the procedural matter. Yeah. Right. So this gives us two weeks to come up with language? The, the, fee, no. the fee for that building is $98,000. it has been paid. Okay, well that means you're only about a half million dollars under what it really costs to process those things. <laughs> you realize the fees don't cover the cost of examining all this stuff, right? But the taxes do. The taxes do. Not the fees. You didn't say taxes. <laughs> 98,000 barely covers like <laughs> work that's gone into this year, this meeting. But then again, the fire department doesn't have to respond to all the false alarms either, so we think we're saving money. Um, okay, so we all agreed to what the goal is on this um, on this decision for the 26. Sorry. Maybe you should restate it. What's the goal, Nick? Well, we're going to resolve the uh, parking and restriping issue. You're going to um, which basically, I think, is accepting that plan that because you proposed it, uh, there'll be a ten thousand dollar bond issued with that uh, deadline of June 1st. 2018 and a contract with the, the uh, contractor that will actually do the work. Evidence of contract. Evidence of contract. And then we're going to condition some of the future permits. <coughs> I'm thinking it's the foundation. I'm thinking it's the, the building on that foundation and potentially any other future non building 16 permits. I don't really know what the sequence of construction is out there. Is he just focused on building 16 at this point? Well, obviously, White Oaks Lane, we're trying to complete construction on White Oaks Lane. And basically, they're in, east, in, in, in filling areas where, um, where the units haven't been constructed. As <coughs> someone, Johnson, will describe as you, if you know across from building six, uh, and as you go around the corner, I think there's three or four units that are not constructed as you go around that corner. Okay. All right, does that sound reasonable? Um, so you're gonna, we're gonna put conditions on the issuance of future permits for things like uh, the application for the garage or a holistic picture of all the changes that he's got in his mind um, and some more details on this garage. Um, well, this whole corner across the street, the, the foundation that's in the wrong spot is, yeah. a, is a potential issue, but right. you know, on the other side of that building is right. the potential garage issue, so then the other owner is going to be complaining about right. something. Right, ripple effects. Um, so this, okay. this is one, two, one, two, three, one, two, three, three unbuilt buildings plus the garage, and then one, two, three constructed buildings that are sort of all impacted by what's happening in this misplaced foundation area and garage area. So all of that needs to be planned out. So we're going to revise the language, come back, and <coughs> maybe close this out next time. That's that's the thinking? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. something? Sure. Okay. Yeah. We'll hold off on issuing that permit till everything's resolved. Right. right until at least this, we have a until decision. Until this minor yeah. amendment yep. process yep. is. Yep. Okay. Okay. All right. Motion to continue this. So, any other comments? Public comments? Do you understand what we're doing? I'm not sure I do. I apologize. I'm um, late. Sure. Um, we're looking at the next meeting to approve the changes to the restriping part of it and can compel them to deal with planning out at the very least where these where this ground structure goes and how the other buildings are impacted by all of that in that corner in your corner of the woods and that portion of white oaks lane and the portion of white oaks lane right. yeah mm -hmm. okay, so at the february 26th 26th yes so right um, so I'll be revising the decision to incorporate 
some language to compel them to do some things before they get building permits. Um, Move that the CBDC continue the discussion for the minor amendment for the PV special permit at Johnson Woods until Monday, um, February 26th. 8.30 p.m. At 8.30 p.m. Second. Second. Uh, three minute break. Yes. Summary, Julie, you have a summary for it? I just want them to show what they did. We can just show you. Yeah, 
I'm tired. Okay. All right, it's my best. <laughs> <laughs> we'll follow the plans. Do you want to talk about this one first, or floor plans? Uh, just the floor plans okay. to get this to the scene. Good evening, everybody. Um, Butin Chapman, Donnie Gowdy from O'Sullivan Architects for the applicant. Um, just likely, just like to just quickly go through our changes. I think everybody's familiar enough. Um, so from the last meeting, I think we had a lot of great feedback for uh, what we really wanted to do. You know, we looking for so. I want to just hit, uh, highlight what we've done, and um, it starts here in the, um, at the at the floor plan at this front unit. So um, we looked again at what we had for room for sliding the building back to provide um, a real front porch and front entry for this for this front unit on Long Chapman Street. So what we've done is, um, along with this new front entry porch and entry piece, we've created a, a real and functional um, front door for the for this um, unit. Um, it still um, works um, as originally proposed with the driveway coming on the side, two parking spaces per unit as before. Um, the units still um, each get a, um, a dedicated entry on the main um, longer facade on the driveway, but um, the change to this front unit now gives us a front door with access up to the living space dedicated um, off the street there. So a plan redesign to really try to activate what's going on in plan in the building. Um, I want to just jump to the elevations now. Mm -hmm. So how that translated to the elevations, um, all right, you can see we've really um, engaged the street more with how we're um, putting glazing on the street. Um, due to the plan changes, we're able to kind of redistribute um, some windows and the symmetry of that front facade to um, place a little more strength on that front entry piece, bring in a functional front porch step. We have now a five-foot um, dedicated front porch, dedicated private space for that unit there. <laughs> and then the rest of the building still has that two-thirds, one-thirds um, design breakdown to help with the scale breaking down. We still have the bays um, incorporated um, for some of the um, other aspects of breaking down the scale. And the dormers are still on the back side facing the mission of deeds. Um, we did look again at the height and the average grade around the building. We tightened up our calculation for average grade. Um, it did um, make us have a change to um, the roof pitch, make it a little more shallower, but still compliant with the code. So we're actually about a foot and a half shorter um, physically before now because our average grade as recalculated to comply is a little lower and the building is physically lower as a result. So those are the bigger um, plan and design changes that just to highlight. And then the last question out there was regarding uh, trash pickup. So I can't remember the name of the DPW director that I spoke with. But Jane. Yes. So she um, said that we would be on the town schedule for pickup. And what they kind of use as their cutoff point is four units. So four and less they would, they would consider on the town pickup. And then anything greater than that would be private. So. Um, those changes. Okay. Um, is that captured? That trash issue captured in the decision? I don't think it was. Mm -hmm. It is. Mm -hmm. um, on page four. Okay, comments? Is this revised layout? Mm -hmm. It's definitely, on the board. definitely an improvement. The, uh, I like the cheap and half mm -hmm. uh, facade. Yeah. Other comments?
No, I, I yeah, I think um, I think <coughs> we're able to incorporate you know everything that we did talk with you about um, last last time. So um, really great job, and, and I don't think I have anything specific to um, to talk through, or at least about the plan itself. Okay. Um, then I'll just open it up to public comment. Um, you guys know the routine. State your name and address. Make sure that you're signed in, please. After the meeting at this point. <laughs> okay. you go? Jim Mayberry, 16 Chapin Avenue. Um, some of the concerns that we had um, have been resolved um, in reading the, the draft proposal. Um, there's just um, a few more concerns. Um, we do continue to wish it was lower in height, but um, <coughs> um, I'm hap we're happy that the um, operation and maintenance is going to be, the language is going to be included in the, um, in the plan. We were very concerned about the maintenance for the previous driveway so it would be taken care of and work efficiently. Um, with the snow removal, um, if there's a lot of snow on the grass area, it will be hauled out. I was wondering if you need any specific language like a, to make sure that it doesn't fill up too much. So why is that a concern? Um, melting. Okay. It's like a lot of runoff melting. Um, I, I just <coughs> was wondering. No, it's fine. It's fine for you to make that comment. Yeah. I'm just trying to yeah. understand what it is yeah. you're, you're thinking there. That's fine. Um, it says hauled off site is needed. Um, yeah, I, I think what will happen is that um, I can't imagine it's going to get that large, but mm -hmm. if, it, if it got so large that it impacted their parking, they would probably haul it off site. Or if it impacted, you know, access around the building, they would probably haul it off. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, I just think it's it's there. It's, it's not bothering anyone. Yeah, I don't think the residents would be happy if it got very, very high. Right, and they have the choice to, to get it hauled away anytime they want. You know? So I, I don't think we're going to impose any specific restriction on it. Um, you know, the only my only concern would be if it was so large that the fire department didn't have access, and I just don't see it getting that large. Yeah. Um, I'd like to request a construction time frame. Um, is there any idea when construction might begin? Um, I think that's kind of dependent on a couple of things, but um, part of you know, thank you. The permitting um, process. The uh, contractor has to submit a schedule and kind of go through that pre-construction um, <coughs> with the town. So I think that's part of that. Um, from if you were a betting man, what do you think your <laughs> time frame is going to be? I mean, I'm sure we'd love to start in early summer. Early summer. Really? That late? You don't think you'd start in the spring? We can start in spring. Spring. How much more design work do you have to do to get this ready to go out to bid? Um, yeah, construction um, drive. Yeah, we could do. We could do spring. No, you don't have to do. No, that. we're not. We're not <laughs> trying to like rush you. <laughs> I know. <laughs> if, if this gets approved tonight, what's the? How long is the appeal pro, uh, period? Mm, 20, 20 days. 20 days. 20 days, right? So it's you get 20 long. days from when you file it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and they have to do construction drawings. Mm -hmm. I just asked Lynn, he'd like to proceed as soon as he can. So I think he'd ideally probably spring sometime. I think it's probably spring. Yeah, spring, spring, spring April spring or summer, yeah. Yeah. as soon as the ground is soft enough and you can start cutting into right. it stuff and get the, everything approved through the town. And the get local. contractors that will give you a decent price and right. won't be too busy, right? right? I mean, that's the other piece of this mm -hmm. yep. right. these days. Right. <clears throat> there will be a pre-construction meeting yep. with the town, and they'll review all the issues and establish the schedule, the proposed schedule, and any concerns. Uh, there are hours of construction already built into the general bylaw. The general bylaw, mm -hmm. yeah. And then yeah. actually, <coughs> asked for them to be modified and I had made a modification to them in the decision. Um, 
I don't remember off the top what the time I put in was. Is that um, o'clock on Saturdays? KJ. That was requested by the abutters, and that, so that's in there highlighted for you guys to mull over. Yeah, I'm okay with that. I mean, it's a pretty residential area. I think if you start running into schedule issues, you have to figure something else out and bring that forward. But it's not that complicated a project where you should run into delays. Most of the uh, pre-construction meetings we have, the contractors don't even work on Saturday. I, I didn't think they would for something yeah. like this. It's just too small and too fast. Even the bigger projects, they don't work on Saturday. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Did you hear that, Joe? Yes, I did. I mean, we can't promise that that's going to be the case. That's but what, we're, that's what that's the trend has been. That is true. Yeah, yeah. I understand. Um, I just have a little uh, concern regarding damage to um, my house with the excavation and the heavy machinery and vehicles <coughs> in such a small, confined area. Um, I was wondering um, if maybe a survey of, of the existing conditions of my home prior to excavation and construction commences. Um, just wondering about cracks and my foundation. They, they don't, it? I'm sorry. Yep. They don't anticipate any blasting, so of course that's going to do a free blast survey. Linda said that if she wants to have her home photographed, he'll do it. Um, <coughs> that's all a pre blast survey is anyway. It's preserving the evidence of is the foundation cracked or not? Is there a crack in the ceiling? Um, but what's going to take place here is going to be simply digging a hole. That's the end of the heavy equipment, and they're just going to off-road vehicles <coughs> pushing up the, uh, the various structures, uh, the members for construction. So mm -hmm. I, I don't see it being a long process, and I don't see it being an extremely <coughs> heavy-duty process. And then you reminded me that um, five years ago they redid, put some heavy pipes, or large pipes, deep down in the Chapin Ave. And uh, that was much heavier equipment than took place here, and that didn't seem to damage the homes. Yeah, I agree. I don't think that the construction is going to be very heavy, but I would also say you're protecting yourself by doing the survey, by taking the pictures, because she can make a claim that the crack that's there is caused by you, and you'd have no evidence to prove that you didn't do it. So it's a pretty simple thing, a photographic survey. Um, uh, thank you um, for putting in a solid wood fence. I, do, um, I still would request an eight foot, like the size of the fence that's already currently in place, uh, versus a six foot fence. Any issue with that? Thank you. And. Uh, the last concern was the crash, and that's been resolved. Can, it, can we go back to the eight, first, eight foot versus six foot? Is there a, is there a difference? Um, I thought somewhere in zoning there was there was some difference between a six foot fence and an eight foot anything any fence over six feet. Building permit. You have to get a permit. Or seven feet is seven feet now for a fence. Seven feet. So anything under seven, no building permit. Over seven, building permit. Mm -hmm. Beyond the building permit, if it's over six feet, it's presumed to be a spite fence. Right. To do damage to an abutter, if the abutter asks for it, it's, it, it doesn't right. come into play. Okay. Right. Right. That's right. right. I, I knew there was some some, some issues yeah. related to, to um, fencing over. Six and there's feet, an so. eight foot fence there now. Is that correct? Yes. So she just kind of wants it to be right. the same. Right. Yeah. There's also a drop in grade on the. Right. Applicant side. Right. Mm -hmm. um, were you able to contact the back abutters at all? What kind of fence they would? Uh, so, yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, if you <laughs> haven't, I think all we're going to do is say that. You would work, work out, out. kind of fence yeah. with them. Yeah, I was just going to say that's how it's worked <coughs> in the decision. I think that's fine. Yeah, to work it. Yeah. I think there's like a weird kind of ownership um, transition going on there, so I don't yeah. know if the answer could be bad right now. That's fine. Anyways. A note on that page six, it does say a six foot fence, but that should be changed to eight foot. Yep. Um, yeah, where was that? Page, page six. Page oh. six. 
Well, that's like I'm saying what's proposed. What right. was proposed in this one is here, like it's in the garage of the driveway. <coughs> By retaining wall with a, I could just say solid wood fence. Okay. Yeah. And then I say that she wants an eight foot fence. Somewhere else. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Other public comment? Do you have anything else? Yeah. Okay. Other public comments? Oh. I'm just curious, in a neighborhood that's all two story homes, how come, like, this doesn't aesthetically fit four stories? Could they take off the top floor? I mean, it's just a bonus one. It's not considered really a bedroom or anything. Like, the whole neighborhood is two story homes. This is actually in a different zone than the remainder of the houses. Right, I know the zoning is it, <coughs> it's on the street. So it's sure, I understand, but um, uh, Mission D is on the right. same street. It is taller than this. Like you go by the zone. There's, there's this weird little buffer zone, and there's some protections built in. That's why they have to meet that angled, uh, that little line angle that you see there between the two elevations. It sort of keeps it away from the residence the district. But it's still on the same street. It's four stories, and the rest of the street's two stories. Understood. But I get what you're saying. It's zoning, so it just doesn't fit. I mean, I just think as a courtesy, you drop it down a little oh. just to make it look Understood, and I think the applicants made some some good concessions and helped us a little bit here, working within what they're allowed by right to do on that piece of property because of how it's zoned. Understand too that your whole neighborhood is zoned for a forty, right. I think. Yeah. So it's very much not what's there now, right. and that's probably the bigger issue that should be addressed somehow. Yes, sir. As you rightfully point out, this is in a district that could have forty-five foot high building. But beyond that, this structure is lower than a single-family house. A single-family house could be 35 feet, and this is 32 and it change. We have a lot of messy edges, and <laughs> we've, we've constantly talked about that, and we try to protect those edges as best we can. We just, it's hard to have a very clean transition sometimes when we've got this sort of old, you know, old um, structured neighborhoods that do one thing and all of a sudden come up to Main Street, and Main Street wants to do something else. Right. And that's sort of bleeding back. <coughs> Other comments? Um, all right. So, do we want to look at this decision, or do we close public hearing first? Move that we close the public hearing for the Denton Smart Growth Plan Review at 14 Shape and Act. A second. Okay. All in favor? Um, uh, the one thing I would add to this decision under construction is I would have a survey done to make sure that that roof is where they say it is. Say that all again, sorry? Sure. I would have a surveyor come out when that roof is starting to be framed, when they frame the initial face of that. You're not doing modular construction, are you? Not anticipated. No. Okay, so when you frame that first wall, right, because they typically build that front A and then they frame off of that, mm -hmm. when they frame that, we should have a surveyor come out and spot that midpoint to make sure it's where we said it is and it isn't two feet higher, right? Because somehow foundations get put in the wrong place. <coughs> <coughs> so, you know, we don't want the builder out there building a, you know, a six and 12 pitch when he's going to be down here somewhere. So that we get the height that we've been told we're getting. So it's just a, you know, an hour's worth of a survey to come out there and spot that point, and then you can frame the rest of it off of that. That's my recommendation for the condition that was imposed on that. Um, okay, so survey of survey to confirm that the roof height is yeah. as proposed. Right, okay. Allowed, whatever. So this right. is going to be contr Six controlled inches. construction, correct? Should be. Um, is that where we would get, this would be regulated more by the building inspector or? 
Um, the building inspector is going to want reports, probably. Yes. Uh, there's an affidavit signed by the architect, and could we maybe get the help of the building inspector to to make sure that the um, the spot the grade is the surveyor is you know verifying the height and as part of the permitting process <coughs> fold that in with the building permit. Yeah, I think so. I think that they should notify the building inspector when the survey is going to happen. Okay. And you can choose to either be out there or accept the report of the survey. Okay. All right. That would be the easiest. Gene, what's controlled construction? Basically, it's, <coughs> it's when the architect is going to deliver regular reports to the building inspector that documents mm -hmm. everything's going according to plan, basically. When you build your house, you don't have site inspections. Your builder does the work, and there are inspections for things like the rough-in on the plumbing and the electrical and the, mm -hmm. fr the initial framing, any structural stuff. Yeah. But on commercial construction or anything over 35,000 cubic feet, you have to have controlled construction, which means somebody's going to watch over this <coughs> and make sure that it's being built the right way and then report it back to the building, building department that it was done that way. Okay, thank you. <coughs> the architect has to sign an affidavit saying that they've they, they have either witnessed the construction or someone under their charge has. So either you or, or Mr. Sullivan will be on the line for that. Yeah, there's yeah, an affidavit up front with um, building permit, and then there's one at the end before a certificate of occupancy. Right, it basically says it was done the way you said it was. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> Notably more stringent than a simple residential construction. <coughs> So do we have a decision? We did. Do you want to talk about the waivers too? I don't know. Um, they haven't changed since last time. Page seven. Page seven. Yeah. Intensity waiver of 21.7 as opposed to 20. <coughs> All in favor of that waiver. And then the um, allowing the project to basically do three units as opposed to the minimum of four. All in favor? Okay. That's really the only waivers that they've asked for. Mm -hmm. Okay. Are you ready for? Yeah, unless the applicant has any comments or questions on this. No comments. Okay. Move that the CBDC approve the downtown smart growth uh, plan review uh, decision for 14 Church and Avenue as noted. For a second. Second. All in favor? Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Besides Perfecto is giving us one last FU, what do you think about? You need to vote on the housing production plan. That's right. Yes. <laughs> Sorry to crack the whip, <laughs> but it's getting filed with the state on Wednesday, so. Um, I don't know if any of you watched the video I sent along of the, the presentation video? to the Board of Selectmen. Yeah. I did not, but I did read the plan. <laughs> wow. I actually got, I, I spent, quite I got sucked in and spent way too much time. <laughs> <laughs> actually, surprising. Yeah, I read the plan also. I mean, it's, and it looks good. I mean, uh, yeah. yeah. 
Sorry. Big question. The school numbers. Because it showed. Sure. The, no, the school. Uh, the I'm sorry. The enrollment, student enrollment numbers, showed progressive decline of enrollment for just about every year on that table of 99 from 1999 to today, right? At all schools. And yet, several years ago, we approved temporary classrooms because we were overbooked. So, I don't know how accurate either one of those numbers is. <laughs> Yeah, I, I was trying to remember um, where that conversation was when we were in town meeting was reviewing the temporary classrooms. I know there was all kinds of data presented at the time. Did we ever do it? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah the temporary classrooms are there. And I don't know if it was a capacity issue that the schools had limited capacity for the lower grades. I, I seem to remember it was like <coughs> kindergarten or whatever where there was some kind of a, a, a curve that, that was, was hitting. There was a little bubble there for that, yeah. one, for that one year that was moving through. And granted, that chart didn't have the level of granularity that you right. would see that in. Right. But it just it's, it was weird to see all this decline and, you know, have some bubble in there. It just didn't show up in any of the numbers. Well, the other half was that because they are kindergartens, they're offering the full day kindergarten versus the half day, mm -hmm. right? Which in effect doubled the kindergarten mm -hmm. um, space needs. Space yeah. needs. Okay. Good on that. Yeah. And then changing the kids, I think, into um, some yeah. uh, having yeah. some level of standard for classrooms, um, which I think mm -hmm. kids there was some putting kids here, there, and everywhere yeah. in the past. I think it was more about capacity than yeah. overall enrollment. It's like better space planning, kind of, like, is that what you were getting? Yes, yes. yes. And my other takeaway, and this is the way I'll be approaching future projects, is that um, it talks about what the capacity is of the downtown smart growth district, you know, for the total number of units and what the right. infrastructure can, can take. and. Mm -hmm. Um, so that number's in there, and I guess all of every, all the data is built off of how much can we actually support. And I think we're there. I think we're real close to that number, regardless. So going forward, I would think future projects need to be scrutinized a little better. You know, um, we had more fluff. We had more ability to say, well, we know the financials will work because, you know, this is kind of what it is. Or we know the traffic will work because it's kind of like this. Yeah. But I think we're going to need to impose those re those requirements on people more now. You know, you're going to have to do a multi-intersection traffic study to show us exactly what's going on. Uh, you're going to need to give us some financial information that shows us, you know, what the plus or minus is on this project. Because I think we're getting to the point where every little bit is going to make a difference now. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we've got um, a lot of units approved that are, you know, won't, won't be ready tomorrow. Basically in, in construction and planning. And we've got things like the Lakeview Ave, which is safe harbored for the moment, I believe. But the Well, the zoning board <coughs> can exercise the, uh, can, can exercise the option under safe harbor. And we're still drilling down into what does that actually mean right. if they want to um, if they want to do that. There's been some emails going around that there's um, a different interpretation than what town council has offered us. So we're still drilling down into it. Somebody <laughs> called the state and got a, a new a new definition. Something that shocked me and town council wasn't interpreting it that way either. Um, so we're so. looking into it. Hmm. Okay. These state regulations uh, always give us a an interesting time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And and also like we should note that there are only seven or eight towns with safe harbors. Yeah. So it's it's kind of like a new. It's not really a <laughs> tested method. Yeah. Untested. Yeah. Right. Yeah, and like then <laughs> and then of those towns that are that have the safe harbor, how many? How many have applications that actually come right, in? Right, that's probably. what I'm saying. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And then we have two years, which I think we're one of two towns with two years. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, like a lot of the times we've reached out to the state, they've indicated to us this is kind of new territory. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so. <laughs> yeah. That's good. That means we've been being productive. Yeah. 
But we're learning as we go. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And we're doing our best. Yeah. <laughs> They're learning as we go. That's the problem, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. So do we have a did we comments on that? Production plan? Yeah. Did, did we vote on the produ housing production plan? Or not? No, not yet. No. Um, there's one. Um, yeah, there's one other thing. language issue that we just got some feedback on, and Julie can pull it up. So it's right here. On I'll blow it up a little more and, and scroll up. Um, so we list our 212 unit increase since the last time we updated the plan in 2013. I believe that was what we did here. Yeah. Um, <coughs> and we have a note on the bottom here about some housing authority units that were lost um, and we've recently been in contact with the new housing authority director and um, you know the, we, it's been requested that we reword this you know the housing authority and the board aren't so thrilled with the way that we've word this here even though it's pretty factual <laughs> um, there's so a lot of history behind in this. the spirit of cooperation <coughs> because we now have a new executive director that we've met with and was very willing to work with us and has expressed an interest on behalf of the board to work together we'd like to maybe reword this in a collaborative way so it's this comment that's in parens um, mm -hmm. well just the simple note is that the we lost the units because the affordability period expired is that's yeah yeah, we could just fine. take out the first yeah. clause, yep. basically. Mm -hmm. <coughs> yeah, sounds good. Perfect. Yeah. Wordsmithing R S. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else? How do we make sure we don't lose any of the other ones? <laughs> Did you read the plan? No. <laughs> um, <laughs> 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 we have a regional housing services coordinator. I'm, I don't know if you've met her or talked to her, but she's been working for the town for three years almost. I think yeah. actually, yeah, three years. Yeah. And um, we have our, our regional housing services office, which is Reading, North Reading, Wilmington, and Saugus. And this is what she does. She monitors monitoring agents. Um, and she has brought to light a lot of these things like that are about to expire. Um, and, and, you know, so that we can work and try to keep them on that subsidized housing majority. Yeah. Yeah. She's kind of the scorekeeper for us. Right. So it's everyday monitoring and being aware. And when people want to sell their units, working with them on the resale so that they don't somehow, you know, slide through and get sold at market rate. Um, all sorts of. There's a lot of uh, minutiae that goes along yeah. with this, as you can imagine. And it's a tremendous bargain for the town of Reading because. Um, we share her the expense of staffing this position with mm. three other towns. So mm. it's a winner for every official employee issue. She, she works, works, she works for, for us, us. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, she's an uh, employee of uh, public services. She's here in Reading. Yeah. And we, um, we pay her salary. So if you look at our budget, you'll see her salaries in there. But the other towns pay us. Okay. okay. Good. Good. Mm -hmm. so, is good. <laughs> Seems to be actually money well spent. Yeah, I think it is. Um, I think it's a bargain. Yeah. And the other towns benefit from it yeah. just as much as we do. And we have a small contract with a housing consultant mm -hmm. um, that works with her in case there's any unusual circumstance. She can um, draw on the expertise of this housing consultant for, again, a very small amount that we share with the other communities. So I think, I think we've got it covered. Yeah for not a lot of cost. And a lot of the units that do expire and fall off have um, <coughs> deed restrictions that were done 30 years ago um, th when they didn't put them in perpetuity. Um, th or they have, you know, documents. Um, right. We sell price multipliers that are wonky or, you know, there's all sorts of different mm -hmm. documents that go with these units. Um, and now, you know, this, the regulations are tighter, um, documents are cleaner. So, you know, the idea is going forward, we don't have as many units that end up at risk. Um, so. okay. Are there any public comments? Yes. Do you need to update page 29 because we just approved the Sunoco project tonight? Um. Cheap. Oh, it's not affordable. Uh, it's on 29. I think the date of this is... 
since I think we dated it last month. So I think it's okay the way it is. Where does it say, um, do you mean this paragraph where I mentioned it? Yeah. I, I can. Um, if you don't have to, I would recommend yeah. you don't. Didn't we date it sometime in December, I want to say? Uh, I, I don't know, actually. I, I know we did the lion's share of the work in December, mm -hmm. and I think this would probably be the only January sixteenth. January sixteenth. So if we're going to say that this is a plan of, as of January sixteenth, I think it's fine the way it is. Okay. Yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't change. I wouldn't try and go in and change it because it's. There's a good chance that it might be someplace else. Yeah. And then in the start of it. Yeah. Unravel. Yeah. Especially if it's a January date, then sure. leave well enough alone. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if she's going to redate it based on when it gets adopted by you guys in the board of selectmen. That's what I don't know. But yeah, I mean, it's probably good to try to not have like a snowball effect. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I'll make a note of that though, and we'll see what. It's being submitted on Valentine's Day, right? Yes. Right. That's an important day. Okay. We want to take a vote on this. <laughs> Move that the CBDC approve of. The adopt uh, adopt the uh, housing production plan. Second. All in favor? Other issues? What's going on in Reading Village? There's a fence around the property now. Um, they were doing. Yeah, there's been a lot of back and forth on that. They started uh, a couple of weeks ago doing the. Um, remediation for asbestos mm. and there's been a lot of um, attention by the health agent and the chair of the Board of Health actually physically went down to the site um, to assess if there are any other health related issues there have been some social media um, cries <laughs> that there were there's a major problem down there with rodents and Lots of people came into our office with the concern about rodents, and when we asked them if they had seen any rodents, they said no, but we read about it on social media. <laughs> so um, there is a plan in place for, um, as health always has, as part of the application process for a demolition permit or abatement of any thing related to rodents. So that's in place. Sorry. And, um, we have a pre-construction meeting with them on Wednesday. On Wednesday, we will do the pre-demolition. Yeah, pre-demo. And uh, they're anxious to begin the demolition of at least the uh, certainly wood building because they had an issue with the fire suppression system. Mm -hmm. One of the pipes froze, and the fire department said, without a fire suppression system, you need to have a fire watch, a 24-hour fire watch. So that's a built-in incentive to get the so demolition that's coming down. down quick. Yeah. yeah. Good. Well, I don't know about quick. There's been <laughs> well, well, all these letters yeah. out to the neighbors saying it's going to happen like tomorrow, and that's not true because um, <laughs> there are all these other steps. Yeah. Ten yeah. yeah. Certified mailing yeah. notification requirement. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So, so. <laughs> it's that same old story. You want to notify the neighborhood but then once they get the letter that says it could happen tomorrow they're all up in arms that wait a minute why is this happening so fast and we weren't notified so we're trying to smooth that out um and then the only other thing is uh for town meeting the zone right now the way it stands the zoning um article would be on the thursday night so the 26th April is when it's right now scheduled. Well, the town meeting, is there anybody here that I don't have a signature for, from Precinct 3? I don't know if you can do that in a public Recently? building. Where do we stand with... Um, you know, sign park is erected that's not compliant. None of it is. Say it again. Down Signs that happen to be magically getting erected around town, like yeah, oh, the trailer-mounted billboard at East Coast Gas. 
it. Um, we are compiling a spreadsheet of just such things, and we will be starting an enforcement process. Good. Yeah. So, perfectos and the real estate. Perfectos, so, uh, we have someone yeah, on tomorrow Jonathan. morning. Yeah, that, that was, yeah, the real and estate. I'd like to know who the electrician is that installed it, because they obviously installed it without a permit. Yeah. So they, they should somehow be roof. The real estate place at the corner of South and Main, they have a three-sided, backlit, menu board sign they just put up. Improper illumination. Oh, the Boston real estate board? Yeah. Yeah. So they're obviously probably the electrician that was doing the work inside the renovation did that probably uh, without yeah. a permit. Mm -hmm. And so I think that they should either be reported to the board or prohibited from pulling permits in Reddick. Somehow they should be penalized for doing that. It's illegal to do electrical work without a permit. The permit fee is supposed to be doubled or something now, right? There's all these penalties that are imposed when mm -hmm. the building inspector has yeah. to review it. So yes. Mm -hmm. the, the, I mean, Dorian's has got their work underway. Is um, Perfecto is now open? I understand it is. We have big open yep. wind banners, and yes. their parking lot was full this morning when I drove well, by. Well, the parking lot. <laughs> so. <laughs> really hard to miss that <laughs> There's a sign that's nailed onto the utility <laughs> pole. <laughs> I'll want it, or whatever it says. Like, which, like, don't try to read it as you drive by, because you have to turn your head at a literally 90-degree like angle while you're cruising down Main Street. And hopefully no one stopped trying to get into Bagel World. <laughs> All right. Oh All right. Move to adjourn. Second. All right. Anybody?